Welcome to Carlsbad. We come here every year, same place. I like the projector, that's why I come here. Welcome to the Senior Center, I am a senior myself. We almost a senior. Old people like to hang around together. I like to hang around older people. I feel younger. <laughs> All right, now uh, this is a deliverance training class and uh, I'm hoping that you'll uh, kind of get an itch in your spirit, man, and you'll want to go set up one of these ministries in your church. It's really easy to do. I set one up in a mega church I attended years ago. <clears throat> And uh, all you need is two or three people gathered together in the name of the Lord. There I am in the midst. You need two people. I started mine with uh, one person. Okay. And then what you do is you hunt down the sick people in your church. You'll have no problem doing that. The churches are massively jacked up. And there's sick people everywhere at your church. And you start picking them off one at a time. You meet them somewhere in private, you know, an office, uh, whatever. And then you go through your little interview with them. Find out how the demons got in, why they're sick, what's wrong with them, you know. And then once that person gets healed, They'll go tell somebody, and then it'll spread all through your church. And then pretty soon you'll have people calling you lined up out the door. That's what happened to me at the Dream Center in Scottsdale, the mega church. I had them lined up on Tuesday night. Dream Center, Tommy Barnett's? Mm -hmm. Tommy Barnett's system. Uh, there was a Dream Center in Scottsdale. That was a mega church. But then the, you got the Dream Center out here in L.A., and there's another Dream Center in Phoenix. Everything Tommy Barnett touches turns to gold. He's got some kind of freaked out anointing <laughs> that I've never seen before. <clears throat> Everything he touches, boom. It's unreal. i never seen anything like it, never. People from all over the world could fly into Phoenix to go see Tommy Barnett. They want to know what the heck's going on. How do I get that? I'm not going to be teaching on that because I don't have it and I don't know how he got it. Contact him directly. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got stuff all over the country. And as soon as he shows up, boom, it booms. Money flows in the door like you can't believe. People come in to serve. It's, it's unreal. Unbelievable. Tommy Barnett's a freak. But he wouldn't know a demon if it bit him in the face. Yeah, so I have a different ministry than, than they do. I was in the Assembly of God for years, and I had uh, demons and didn't know it. Lust and anger were the ones that really got me. I had a lust scanner in my eyes. I scanned every check I ran into. <clears throat> everything about them I stared at. I mean, everything about them, down to their fingernails. Skin, breasts, yeah. booty, bootylicious. <laughs> and I knew it was wrong and struggled with it for years. I went to every pastor and evangelist I had in the Assemblies of God business. Never got, I did what, exactly what they told me. Go to church more, read the Bible more, pray more, fast, go to the men's meeting. I went through everything. And at the end of it, this lust thing kept coming back. The anger thing. I had a hair trigger anger. If somebody screwed me over in business, I put them on a list. And later on, I'd pay them back. And I was one of the top Christians in the system. I did the men's ministry, I did the outreach ministry, I was one of the top tithers, I was a professional counselor back then, mm -hmm. secular counselor. 
I went to church four times a week, ex not including special programs and evangelists. I was on top of that. And I was churched out. And I was still sick. It went on for years. It's frustrating. And then, you know, a miracle happened. I found out I had demons. Because they had told me Christians couldn't have demons. That left me in bondage sitting there in the pew. I was speaking in tongues and had demons. That, that made me angry. Not at them, but at the fact I got tricked. I knew who tricked me. I spent years hurting. I wanted to get rid of it. I knew what was wrong. Just broken. And then I ended up here after I got delivered. Standing right here in Carlsbad. Years later. Decades later. So I understand everything you're going through. I've been through it. I'm, I was jacked totally up and was one of the greatest Christians in the church. Everybody looked at me, their brother Mike. Oh, a lot of people came to me for mentoring, counseling, prayer. Brother Mike. Brother Mike sucked. Uh, this is too tough for this crew. Uh, <clears throat> need to warn you, you're not at your church now. You're at a Brother Mike seminar. So hold on to your seat. And, and so you wouldn't believe the number of pastors who have come to me for counseling, sicker than dogs, evangelists, TV preachers, mega church pastors. They've all come into my office and seen them for years. They're so sick you can't even believe it. The guy on TV, nuts. It's awful. Why? Nobody does what I'm going to go through with you today. I'm hoping that you will catch it and help these church people get healed. Because they, they want to be healed. They don't want to live like that anymore. No, well, nobody laughs, so I'm going to go and keep going. <laughs> well, I can't believe it. Usually somebody leaves. All right, so uh, as, you, as you've been watching, uh, America is, is lost, and it's, it's, it's done. It's going to slowly tank. Nothing's going to stop it. <clears throat> the reason it's lost is not because of Satan. It's because of the churches. The churches failed God. They failed him because they didn't do the Great Commission. So in Matthew 28, Mark 16, and Luke 24, when Jesus left to go back to heaven, he gave them his final words. And his final words were, I want you to do this while I'm gone. Boop, 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 boop. And the churches said, we're not doing that because that's uncomfortable. Yeah. So we're going to do it our way. And our way led America right down to the pits of hell. Yeah. And it's the church's fault, not the devil. Yeah. He's doing what he normally does and what he does naturally. There's nothing wrong with the devil. He's perfectly sane. Yeah. The churches are nuts. Yeah. Nobody, nobody left. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> the problem is, about 80 years ago, the church threw out deliverance because deliverance is not fun. <laughs> Salvation's fun <laughs> and healing's fun. Yeah. But deliverance is not fun. Yeah. Okay? A movie came out, as you know. There it is. Biggest thing that ever hit the United States. Okay? That movie was great. People were getting delivered in the movie theaters. Demons were flying out. It was unbelievable. Okay. Unfortunately, the devil said, okay, you like that movie? I'll give you deliverance this way. Do it this way. 
and I have no problem with it. And so they all took off. They're all on YouTube now. Yeah. Everybody in that movie, plus her and their daughter and their kids, yeah. they all got a YouTube channel. Yeah. And it's a crock of crap deliverance, okay? No deliverance is valid for any period of time that doesn't include repentance. Mm -hmm. And blowing demons out of people at shopping malls and parks and so on, you're, you're temporarily helping them. But yeah. what you don't understand is if you stayed with that person mm -hmm. a week later or two weeks later, they will have all gotten back in. Say, so you cannot have deliverance that lasts without repentance. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Now it's fun to call out Ahab and Jezebel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that makes, that's a great show. Yeah. And this guy's pooping and yelling. That's good camera work. But if you go back a month later, this guy's sicker than when you saw him. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. And so now we've got come out in Jesus' name crap, sweeping the country, and it's only temporary. It'll fizzle out like every other Christian fad. But the problem is, uh, it's kind of like Bob Larson. Okay, Bob Larson is a minister from Scottsdale, where, where we're, in Arizona, where we're from. And years ago, he uh, moved from Colorado to Scottsdale. Okay. And he was on the radio. And uh, several decades ago, he had gone, to, he'd gone on a mission trip to Africa. And uh, he noticed that people had demons over there in Africa. <laughs> and he said they were manifesting. And he goes, wow, that's weird. I wonder, if, I wonder if demons are in America. So he saw Nigeria demons. He come home and started, and sure enough, people started manifesting spirits here. So then Bob, very intelligent guy, prolific author, did a great job in showing the church in America that demons are in the church. He kind of brought it to the forefront. Okay, that was great. The problem is Larson screwed everything up by focusing on manifestations and not upon repentance and mind renewal. See? So, you can sell a lot of books if somebody's sitting here manifesting. Yeah. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah. But that's not helping that person. Mm -hmm. See? I know Bob. I've been in his services. He goes around and he picks out the manifestors. Mm -hmm. There's one. Holler him up. Get, get her. Get him up here. And then they come up, boom, there's a massive show. And then they go sit down. Sick. Okay? But it looks great. And that Bob, that swept, swept the country. Manifestations are not important. It's change, yeah. change. Then the devil truly fears. Yeah. He doesn't fear come out in Jesus' name. Yeah, he lost some ground there. He picked it back up later. <laughs> He's fine with that. He's outsmarting everybody. The devil's not sick and he's not insane. He's right on the money. He knows exactly what he's doing. But somebody who repents and changes, yeah. he fears those people. <laughs> Nobody left. Wow. All right. Go to my YouTube channel if you would. All our teachings are on there, youtube.com slash houseofhealingaz. 
lots and lots of teachers on a wide range of subjects. All my TV shows are on there, you know, all the stuff I did on the radio, it's all on there, so on. If you'd like to help our ministry, you can go to Good Search instead of Google and then put in our charity name and then they'll donate to it, money to us for free, won't cost you anything. This is the most important thing in the world that I have. I took years to build it. Just send me an email and I'll send you the miracle list. If you're going to start your own ministry, which I hope you do, all you got to do is follow these steps and you, you'll be shocked at how many people will get delivered and what kind of fruit you'll have. You'll be stunned. This took me years to put this thing together and it works 100% of the time. The problem is I can only get about 10% of the people to actually do it. And, and so if you want to start your own ministry, I hope you do, all you got to do is just take step one and plug that into the person. And you'll, you'll be having demons fill in their depends left and right, just on the first one. They'll freak on the first one. Then you go to the second one. They're, they'll be dying. Okay. <laughs> to give you an idea, uh, I know the guy, he's a really nice guy, his name uh, Jay Bartlett, and he travels a lot in California. Have you ever heard of that guy? Yes. Yes. He's a deliverance guy, he floats around, goes to hotels, he's a hotel deliverance guy. Mm. Really nice guy, super guy. He was sitting around one day watching TV, and Bob popped on the tube, and he goes, man, that's interesting. So he, he started watching Bob Larson. He started going to his services. And he said, well, I can do that. That's true. You can do that. Any Christian can do that. Yeah. So he starts doing it. And so now he travels all around the United States, even up in Canada. And he has meetings like small meetings like this. And he does exactly what Bob does. He confronts the spirit. Yeah. Ahab, you know, put that peg leg down. <laughs> come on. And boop, there they come. <laughs> the demons manifest on cue. On cue. Yeah. I've been to his services, great guy. Um, you know, Bob's, Bob's really not a great guy. He's, he's tough. He's got a temper. Uh, he's the toughest Christian I've ever met, wow. bar none. Bob Larson's like some kind of a freaked out power lifter or something. Uh. I mean, he, he's older than me and fights like a 20-year-old yelling at the demons. The guy's unreal. Well, Jay kind of picked that up, but he doesn't have quite the, you know, temperament Bob does. He's more of a nicer <laughs> deliverance person. But this is what they're missing here. This is what they're missing. If you really want to help someone, you go to this list, send me an email, I'll mail it out to you immediately. I send a couple dozen out a week. There's my deliverance training course. You'll save all kinds of time, trouble, and money, and everything. If you'll just take these 18 classes, you won't make all the mistakes I made. I made every mistake in the book. I, I didn't have anybody help me. I was kind of on my own. If you want to find out what's going on now in the world, here they are, the seven churches. Mm -hmm. You can order that off the website. We have a Wednesday night Zoom that's, this thing is a bomb. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the number of people getting delivered on this Zoom every week, Wednesday nights. It would be 5 o'clock here, 5 p.m. here. Send me an email. I'll send you the link and the Zoom and everything. You don't want to miss that. There she is. Julie's in the back. Stand up, sweetheart. There she is. There we go. <clears throat> Monday night Zoom. There it is. Monday night for the ladies at 6.30. Okay? 
get the link there. You can email me. I'll send it to you. I send out uh, 15 or 20 of these a week. We have a women's spiritual recovery conference coming up January 20th at the Deliverance Center. It's only a six-hour drive from here to there. Yeah. Send me an email. I'll give you a couple of hotels near there and so on. Okay? That's for the ladies. Our healing service is the 30th of this month at the Deliverance Center. Peter the preacher will be there. You can, draw, you can uh, download an app if you want to help us out financially. Thank you. You can donate on the website if you want to. If you go to the website, uh, all my radio shows are on there. I've been on the radio for over 20 years in Arizona. I'm on uh, 1010 AM Christian Radio every morning, Saturdays and Sundays. I'm also on uh, Conservative Talk Radio on Sundays at 8 o'clock. I have a podcast every Sunday at 9 o'clock. Wait a minute, that's the wrong time there. I apologize. 8 o'clock here. 8 o'clock here. I should have switched that. 8 a.m. Pacific Time Sunday, 9 o'clock in Phoenix. Twitch.tv and then put in that code there, HCCADC. You're there. I'll see you at 8 o'clock tomorrow. There's the uh, ambush team I was talking to you about. I set one up at the Dream Center. You can set one up. It's easy to do. You only need two or three people to wipe out half a church. As you continue to grow at your church, you're going to get caught. <laughs> and you will be expelled. That is God telling you it's promotion time. I got expelled and then went and opened up the house of healing. Okay, so rejection is not bad, it's good. Right. <laughs> our Thursday and Friday services are right here. They're broadcast on our YouTube and Rumble channels, Thursday and Friday nights. That would be 6 p.m. here. Friday and Thursday and Friday. Then they're rebroadcast on these outlets. Thanks to Kelly. There you go. Put in that uh, H O H H C C. You're there. Thursday and Friday nights at seven o'clock. Phoenix time, six o'clock. All right. Now, when you start your ministry, this is what you'll be running into most frequently. And this is what people suffer from the most. So I thought I would hit that this weekend. This is how Satan controls Christians. He uses these two methods of dominating them. He uses lies and fear because it's the polar opposite of God's word and truth. And if... If he can control your mind with lies and fears, he can control the rest of you for the rest of your life. All right, 1 Timothy 4 explains it. The Holy Spirit says in the latter days, and we're almost there, we got a few years left and the rapture is going to hit. This thing's going down fast. Yeah. <laughs> But you'll see uh, more apostasy occurring left and right in the churches, everywhere. It's going to happen all over the place. Because it was predicted, it says it right here. And it says uh, they will, Prosecco, they will grab and hold on to planos spirits. Deceiving, lying spirits will infiltrate the church. And the people will launch on to them and clutch these lies. And they will follow didascalia, teachings of daimonian demons, teachings of demons. Uh, Phoenix is a hotbed for kundalini spirits, and we have those in Phoenix, they're huge. And it started back in the early 2000s, I think. We had a lot of angel feathers gold dust, mm. things falling in the church. Mm. Uh, and now it's progressed to glory clouds and courts of heaven. Uh, you know, and there'll be another wave after that of these 
insane doctrines used to distract people yeah. from repenting. Yeah. If you're looking for a glory cloud or, or a uh, angel feather, <laughs> uh, you've got serious spiritual problems. You've got serious problems. <laughs> uh, I saw one minister that had gold dust in her hair. Mm. <laughs> I've got the anointing tonight. <laughs> Excuse me a minute. Oh, yeah. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are demonic carnivals. Mm -hmm. These are familiar spirits dominating. They're taking over. Mm -hmm. They're in charge now. Yeah. You need an angel feather like you need another hole in your head. Yeah, for sure. You've already got one. You need another one. <laughs> They will speak lies, and they will be hypocrites. Oh, my gosh. Have you turned into Christian television? It's scary on Christian television. They will have their consciences seared. That's the Greek word kateriazo. It means to be cauterized. Once your conscience is seared and hardens, it doesn't work anymore, and you can't filter out sin. So what you used to filter out as sin now seems fine to you. Right? Mm -hmm. And everybody's like that. Gangs, mafia, family fights. Mm -hmm. They're all the same. They don't start out that way. They start out with, you know, arguing, bickering, raising your voice later, yelling later, screaming later. And as you go through that process of sin, your conscience cauterizes. Mm -hmm. It gets hard. And it doesn't filter out sin anymore. Mm -hmm. The more you sin, the more your conscience yeah. cauterizes. Hello? In deliverance, when you're ministering to these people, the longer they let demons stay in their body, when they know they're there, the more powerful they become. Yeah. All deliverance is based on human free will. Your will determines what stays in your body and what doesn't. Because this is your body and you own it. This is your mind and you are in control of it. The devil will do anything in the world to take your mind from you, but God will not. He will do nothing. He wants you to volunteer your mind. Yeah. The Holy Ghost works with volunteers. The devil works with slaves. Yeah. What you allow is what you will live with. And if you can live with it, then you've got to die with it. And God won't do anything about it. He'll give you a suggestion. He'll give you a nudge. Why? Love. Mm -hmm. He's trying to help you. I love you. But he won't force you yeah. to do anything. He won't violate human free will. The devil violates it all the time. He's dying to have it. That's all he wants is your free will. Father will not take it from you. He has to be given it. you got to voluntarily give it. The devil works with slave. Father works with servants. Mm -hmm who voluntarily submit. How does the devil control human beings? Well, just like this. It says the God of this age, I own age, has blinded the not in my thoughts. See, that verse should have been translated thoughts. They put mind instead of those people who are not believing. When I read this verse a couple decades ago, God showed me something. There were two kinds of believers. There's born-again unbelievers, and there's sinners who are unbelievers. And then God showed me exactly how that works. Sinners are unbelievers by nature. They do it naturally. Christians are also unbelievers by their free will. For example, Baptists don't believe in deliverance. They do believe in healing. Episcopals, Methodists, Lutherans, they don't really believe in it. Some Christians don't believe in hell. 
They don't, there's all kinds of Christians who are unbelievers mm -hmm. in a lot of God's truth. Yeah. They don't believe it. They don't buy it. Right? Yeah. And so when you're working with people with deliverance, you're going to be working with Christian unbelievers. Yeah. In fact, your church, many people in your church don't believe in deliverance and don't believe Christians can have demons. Yeah. I was in the Assemblies of God, a Pentecostal organization who didn't practice deliverance. The largest Pentecostal organization in the country is Assemblies of God. They're number one. Wow. And they don't practice. Nobody told me. Mm. I was demonly jacked. Mm. I would have given anything to run into Mike Smith. <laughs> I'd have loved to have an idiot like Mike Smith stagger into my Somebody God church and point at me and say, brother, hey, you, you're chuck full of lust demons. Yeah. You need deliverance. Yeah. I would have leaped out of my chair, the pew, yeah. I'd, have, I'd have run down. Yeah. No, nobody ever came to help me. Mm. Not one person. Nobody. And you're not going to let that happen at your church. Are you? No. Are you? At a girl. You know who I'm looking at. Why, did the, why does the devil block your thoughts? So the truth doesn't get in. There it is. Now, supernaturally, that's unbelievable. A spirit comes to a person and blocks their thoughts. See, I'm blocking your vision right here. Can you see me? No. I told you. See how I outsmarted her? Huge IQ. Yeah. <laughs> they can block yeah. thoughts. Yeah. I blocked her vision phys yeah. physically, but they are spiritually able to block thoughts. Yeah. How in God's name do they do that? Supernatural. Mm. It's supernatural. Yeah. They can also put thoughts into your mind. Yeah. yeah. Supernaturally. Yeah. They use two things. Spirit will put it in there, poof, or they'll use a person to put it in there. Yeah. I'll, I'll put it something on. Uh, I'll say something to you. It's stupid. Yeah. Um, a spirit in me is saying something to her, stupid, mm -hmm. yeah. or wrong, or a lie, or something right. over there. Right. I'm trying to put a thought in her mind. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. You are. Okay, good. <laughs> I, got, I got a voucher here. One gal is listening to me. God can put thoughts in your mind. The Holy Ghost puts thoughts. Yeah. And so can the enemy. Yeah. Says it right there. Yeah. I'm not making any of this up. Yeah. I'm, this is right here. Yeah. Where do the lies come from? We know. I think I might skip through this section. Yeah. Satan is the father of lies here. I'm going to skip through this part here. There's no truth in him. He always speaks lies. Yeah. He speaks lies because that's his nature, right? Uh, where does fear come from? Okay. Now, this verse here is quoted by many Christians, and none of them really understands the verse. Because it was mistranslated. It says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. That's the wrong word. That's delia. It should have been translated cowardice. The Greek word for fear is phobos where we get our English word, Phobia. phobias. Wow. Dalia is shyness, introversion. Uh, you know, when I, when I had fear demons and I was in college, I took uh, principles of public address. It was a speech class. Mm. And you had to get up and give speeches to the rest of the class. Right. He had to learn how to give speeches. And, I mean, my fear demons, I didn't know anything about demons. Yeah. They were jumping. I had knots in my stomach. I, I, uh, I had a shortness of breath. I mean, I was fighting it yeah. to get up there and give a, give a speech in principles of public address. I was a freshman, wow. college. I was, I had coward demons. I was scared. And... You can't get anything from God if you're shy and introverted and scared, yeah. okay? Wow. You can't get your prayers answered. You can't get the miracles from God. You can't get nothing, yeah. see? God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, oops, excuse me, yeah. cowardice, 
but he gave us dunamis, supernatural power, agape, unconditional love, and sophronismus, a disciplined or sane mind. That comes from God. Cowardice does not come from him here, and I'll get, get into that a little more later. The process you're going to run into with these people is this. Fear, demons, coward spirits, they always work together. They're like kissing cousins. They're partners. And one can't live without the other. The fear demons are the ones that attack you boldly like a lion and, you know, like, boom! Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the coward demons are the ones that cause you to be shy and introverted and not go get help. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they kind of they, you kind of shrink mm -hmm. like you're gutless. You know, yeah. oh geez, I don't want a conflict. I don't yeah. like conflict situations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm shy. Yeah. And that's a Delia spirit. Mm. You follow that? Yeah. They work together. One of them scares the crap out of you. The other one causes you to re yeah. oh, I don't want to bother them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see. Yeah. When I found out I had demons, I was furious. Yeah. I wanted them out. I said, my God, I've been deceived for years. They made a fool out of me. Yeah. I was, to use a Hebrew word, pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to get that way. <laughs> now, here you go. In the Old Testament, these demons, Baath spirits, these are powerful demons. They scare the crap out of you. They're horrible. The federal government uses these demons continuously to keep us peons, all of us peons, yeah. see? I'm white and I don't like blacks, and blacks are black and they don't like whites, and they're gonna take over. I'm not gonna get this, and I'm like, it's all fear based. Oh, I gotta have a shot. I need another shot. Now I need another one. Now I need, if I don't get it, I'm gonna get. Well, King Saul had this whole system set up. This demon would jump on him yeah. like a monster. Yeah. And he was paralyzed with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, We call it uh, having a panic attack. Yeah. Fear spirits cause panic attacks. Mm -hmm. The person starts to freeze up. Yeah. Their throat gets, uh, the, yeah. the spirit moves up here, choke. Yeah. Then they sweats. Yeah. And then they... Dry mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then they back over. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I got something in my stomach. Oh, not. There's a knot in the stomach. Yeah. That's a panic attack. Wow. Those are fear spirits manifesting mm. after a trigger. The person faces something they don't want or don't like or kind of scares them. And then this thing pops. Yeah. And it goes in that order. Stimulus, pop. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Well, Saul had it bad. And they said, hey, let's go get somebody and play the harp and calm you down. Mm -hmm. An evil spirit from God is upon you, and he will play, and you will be well. Mm -hmm. Okay? So here's how it works. <clears throat> God says, don't do that, or you're going to get this. And the person says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's God giving it to you yes. because he set up a system mm. where if you obey, you get these blessings. Right. If you disobey, you get yeah. your face kicked in. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. they called everything God doing it. Ooh. But it was simply God setting up the system where King Saul kept sinning yeah. and he wouldn't repent. Yeah. And so the fear demon was allowed to launch an attack against this poor guy and tortured him. We call them. Uh, we call them panic attacks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, she's not listening, so could we move her to the back? Now, <clears throat> when you're ministering to these people, you will be able to diagnose them very easily with this verse. Okay, so there is no phobos, no fear, in unconditional love, agape. Okay, so if you know that no matter what you do or say ever, you're always my girl.
okay? She's not going to be afraid of me. But if she senses that I don't have unconditional love for her, and if she says or does something, I might nitpick her or criticize her, she'll... So the great apostle John is explaining it here. Here's fear, and here's the root of fear, not understanding how much you're loved. So when you're ministering to someone, they're having thoughts about, well, maybe God doesn't love me. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm unworthy. Yeah. I don't know. I was really bad. I shouldn't. Maybe I should. And they start having self-doubts. Yeah. That's because they don't understand how loved they are. Yeah. They don't get it. Yeah. They're questioning it. Because if they understood it, they would never fear God again the rest of their lives. They would, they would come boldly before the throne of grace. They would obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Yeah. Mm. But they had, I don't know. So when you're ministering to them, you have to fix that love problem. Yeah. It's in here. Yeah. And if you don't fix it, they're not going to be willing to receive all that Father has for them. They're going to block some of it. Yeah. It's never God's fault. Everything's a green light on that end. The red light's at our end. Mm. Everything's fine there. I'm screwed. Yeah. But perfect love, teleos, complete love, completed love, throws out balo. Yeah throws out yeah. if, if when you're ministering them you can get them to receive this revelation they are unconditionally loved yeah. there's nothing they can say or do to break it yeah. even if they tell the good Lord to go screw himself and cuss him from one day to the next call him everything in the book love never fails yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Pray, thank, thank God, God. Yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs> Nobody left. <laughs> love, love never fails. But if they don't understand that, we're not going to be able to get the demons out. Mm. Does God really love me? Does he really know who I am? Does he really want me to be delivered? If there's any question there, the demons will catch it. Hey. Yeah. Doubting. Yeah. Mm. We can't get them out. Yeah. You got to fix that. Did I, yeah. Anybody not understand what I just said? You got to fix this love problem. Is that hard to do? Very hard to do, yeah. particularly when you're raised in an abusive environment. Your parents are complete idiots. Your adopted parents are morons. Yeah. Everybody's a psycho in your life. Yeah. They're constantly criticizing you. They're running you down. They're stepping on you. They're yeah. degrading you. They're molesting you. They're raping you. That person yeah. has a tough time seeing yeah. Father's love. Yeah. The demons are blocking it. Yeah. Second Corinthians, they block the thoughts. I love you. Block. Why would you let me be abused? Yeah. I love you. Well, why did you give me my psycho dad as a parent? Yeah. It blocks it. Yeah. You have to fix that to get them healed. They, no matter what they did, they are unconditionally loved. No matter what. There's no sin that breaks that love. It can't be broken. Okay. Enough on that? Huh? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> if you don't do that, these people are going to keep suffering because phobos or fear from demons uh, punishes the person. It's like being whipped. Mm. People that have anxiety issues and uh, feel like they're being beaten all the time and they don't feel loved. And that's what John is saying here. 
people who are being attacked by fear feel like they're being punished, policis. That's what you do to people that are criminals. You punish them for their crimes. They feel like they're being punished in life because they're being beaten with fear. And he that fears, there it is, teleos, complete, doesn't have complete love. There, there's a love problem between that person and God, and you have to help, help fix that with them. You gotta stop right there. That's why you don't go to a park and blow demons out of somebody or blow them out. See, this, that's not gonna help. Yeah. This helps yeah. enormously, enormous help. God's word. People feel like they're being tortured, and it usually starts in childhood. Demons get into people in childhood because that's where it's easiest to get in. Children are defenseless. Their parents were told by God to take care of them, and they don't do it. Dysfunctional families are a plague. What's our hope of healing here? Well, we have to give the person truth. Okay? Every person that's going to come to you for deliverance has in their head an eight track of lies. Do nice. uh, yeah. you like that one? Yeah, eight track. You hear that? Old. <laughs> Can it, this guy, Kelly, Kelly, this one out. And. And can you get her out? This. Every person you're ministering to has a CD in their head that plays that plays over and over again. What their mother said to them: "You're, you're fat. You're stupid. You're, you're not. You're not going to make it." It's what their dad said to them. You know, you're a loser. Why can't you be like your brother? Why aren't you a good athlete? How come you're not smart like you're... Yeah. And this, this tape plays, the demons play it. Yeah. They play it in your head, clear into adulthood. It goes oh, on repeat. Yeah. It, re- it recycles constantly. And it causes the person to live a dysfunctional life of spiritual failure. Yeah. This destroys it. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll go through this pretty fast. This, you probably know all this, okay? Okay. Uh, truth comes from God, obviously. And this is what we're trying to do to get them healed. We're trying to get the person to believe God's word. The word of God says, listen, I love you no matter what you said or did your entire life to me or anybody else. No. I love you, Adolf Hitler, you my guy, uh, just as much as I love Billy Graham over here. Yeah. I got Adolf Hitler over there, got Billy Graham sitting here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, go, just play with me on this. Yeah. They're not really sitting here. Yeah. This, this guy's in heaven, that one's in hell, doesn't matter. Yeah. God loved that person, this one, the same. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Same. Yeah. That's sick, isn't it? Yeah. It's a miracle. It's not sick, it's a miracle. Yeah. Stalin sitting there, Hitler, Mother Teresa, your mother. Got four of them here. Yeah. Exactly the same. Yeah. Unconditional love means what? Unconditional. It's unconditional. Yeah. And she can stay. Yeah. <laughs> it's unconditional. That means it doesn't matter what you said or did. Yeah. How many people do you murder? Adolf, buddy? Ten? Ten men? <laughs> Joey, Joey, how you doing? How many you murder? Twenty men. Mother Teresa, hun, how many you murder? Mur- none? You ain't murdered anybody? What's your problem, girl? <laughs> All love exactly the same by God. All of them love. He could have been sane, saved. He went to hell. He could have been saved. Took a bullet. He went to hell. The grace was there. You could have taken advantage of it, but they didn't. Free will. Now, here's your key to getting these people delivered. Here it is. 
you got to give them the truth. You cannot soft pedal it or whitewash it or whatever the term you want to use. You can't do that. See, that means you can't church it. The, the church system is awful. The way they look at it is each, each human being in the church is a unit of revenue. And so if I say something as a pastor offensive to these two people, well, then two units of revenue just left because they got mad at me. So to keep them there and fill the rest of these seats up, I have to soften my speech. I have to maybe drop, drop a couple of drawers and kiss some fanny. Okay. When I got in the ministry, I threw all that in the trash. I don't care whether you don't like me or you're ever going to come back here. I'm going to tell you what it says, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. That's the end of it. That's what this is. You will know the truth and the truth, not lies, not exaggerations, not embellishments, yeah. will Eleuthera, oh, liberate you. It will set you free through truth. So you have to give that to the person to get them delivered. You have to get them to face it. And most people don't want to face it. They don't want to be criticized. They don't want to be looked at in a bad light. Yeah. They got coward spirits. Yeah. You have to tell them the truth. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is the instigator of all truth, uh, as you know. Uh, you can get sanctified through the Word of God, because the Word of God is truth. Now, uh, remember, sanctification is a term that everybody fights over at church. For some reason, I'm the only one that figured it out. It's a bifurcated concept. There's instantaneous sanctification that is progressive. Mm -hmm. Instantaneous sanctification, your spirit man, when you become born again, you're perfectly sanctified, yes. and your spirit man is perfect in the eyes of God. The rest of you is not. Yeah. So your mind, your body, your soul, your conscience yeah. heals over time. It goes through progressive sanctification. See that? Yeah. Pastors and everybody fight over this term sanctification. Oh, it's this and that. No, it isn't. That's what it is. It's a split concept. And if you split it up, it makes sense. Every born-again Christian is sanctified, yeah. but in their spirit, man, mm -hmm. not in their mind, yeah. or not in their body, right. not their conscience. Right. That's a progressive sanctification. Yeah. Well, if you're, 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 you're living in sin, if you've if you, you got to sanctify yourself to get rid of your sin. No. Jesus said he sanctified himself. Hagiazo means to be set apart. See, a person who's sanctified is set apart for God. Yeah. I'm set over here for the Lord. You guys are over there. I'm set over here. Sanctification. Yeah. And that's what Jesus said. Father, I sanctify myself. He wasn't saying I'm going to get rid of my sin. Yeah. Far from it. He's saying I'm setting myself over here to die on the cross for you. <laughs> That's how you do it. Yeah. Sanctification. That's why you can always come before the throne room because your spirit man is sanctified. Mm. See, you may you may have screwed up over here. Oh, tapped into some porn, knocked off some masturbation, screamed at my wife. Yeah. You might have done that. That's true. But your spirit man. Yeah. So you can always go in, yeah. Father, forgive me. Yeah. And you always get the door open. Yeah. It's always open. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm just enjoying my own teaching. I, I'm not, inter <laughs> not interested in you. I'm just over here enjoying my own self. The door is always open because your spirit man is perfect. Yeah. Perfect. In the eyes of God. Yeah. I'm not perfect. I got to work on this, that, this, and that. But my spirit man, I'm not working on nothing. I'm good to go. Yeah. Good to go in to the blessing zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Look at that. Again, here's the Holy Ghost running amok here as usual. You have the Holy Ghost in your spirit man. You're good to go. He's got everything. He's amazing. Uh, Pilate didn't want to hear the truth. John 18, I'm going to skip over this part. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Sure it is. And Pilate didn't listen. Oh, man. See, free will, human free will. He said, what is truth? Then left. And God didn't go, Pilate, come back here, please. No, he just walked out. Human free will. God let it go. He'll let me go. He'll let you go. He'll let anybody go. God's vast creation has two unique qualities, which are humans and angels. And they have something nobody else has. Fish, insects, animals. What's that? Free will. Angels have free will. You want to stay to serve the God, Lord? I don't. Oh, you're out. Do you want to? Yep. Okay, you stay. Gabriel. Michael stayed, Lucifer left. Free will. Humans, exactly the same. You want to serve the Lord? I do not. Okay, you're out. How about you? I do. Oh. You want to go through healing? Okay, that's your... Do you? No, no, I'm on Social Security. I need to be sick. Okay, now, do you want to get delivered? Do you want to get delivered? Yeah, I do. I want to get... Okay, you're going to repent of screaming at your wife and... Watch it. You going to repent of that? I am. How about you? You know what? No, nah, I'm not. Okay, you're out. You go out. You stay. I mean, I'm pre pretending I'm God right now. You're out. You stay. I'll help you to the max. You, I hope you come back later. I love you. Anybody following this? That's how deliverance works. Yeah. Paul, uh, John said, we are of God, and we know that God hears us. People who are not of God are not going to listen to us. There's a spirit of truth, there's a spirit of error. Everybody knows that. Okay. How does Satan control Christians? His number one goal is your family. Yeah. It's his first strike. Yeah. There's an order to the spirit world. For example, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. they're, they're both equal, and nobody's better than anybody else, but there's a structure to it. God has structures for things, right? So he created biology. Yeah. Your body runs on its own, and you don't even know it's running. Right. You're looking at me and listening to me yeah. eagerly, right. <laughs> but you don't know your whole body is, is working perfectly. That's God's law. Mm -hmm. See, her intestines, her heart, her... She and I even think about it. Yeah. Dad, mom, kids, father, son, Holy Ghost. Right. There's a structure to it. Nobody's better than anybody else, but that's how God structured it. Right. Okay? So... Husbands are in a bad spot because they have most of the responsibility from God. And if the husband manipulates or screws over the wife, major problems hit the husband. What is that? Your prayers are going to be blocked. Here we go back to demons blocking prayers. Okay, If your husband and you're treating your wife, manipulating her, talking down to her, trying to control her because you're smarter than her, bigger than her, stronger than her, whatever it is, guess what's going to happen? Law of sowing and reaping comes back here, and your prayers will be blocked. You can't afford to have your prayers blocked because you need your kids, your wife, your mother, your parent. You need your prayers answered. 
husbands. And so you got to do what I do. Yeah. You learn not to die on certain battlefields. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> My wife comes with comes up with something. Oh. I go, okay. Yeah. I gotta learn what what to stick on and what to yeah. go ahead and chill on yeah. because I don't want to come to a Carl's bed <laughs> and have the anointing. Yeah. Not here. See, I got so I got Carl's bad in the back of my mind. Yeah. My wife come up with something nuts. I'm going, well, I guess I'll go with a little bit with the nuts so I don't get upset and hurt her or insult her so I don't have a problem at Carl's bad. Come on. Am I making any sense? Come on. So, so I'll give in. Yeah. I'll give in on the wife's insanity. <laughs> this, this is going to be deleted, right? I'll give in on that and not cause a scene or a problem. Because I got Carl's bad thinking here. Yeah. Well, that's so good. I want me. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. <laughs> Here's the biggest one you'll run into. When you were young, if you dishonored your parents, and in our society, parents are so jacked up now. Uh, when you were young, you hated them, you criticized them, you couldn't believe it. They abandoned you, they beat you, they did all kinds of stuff. All of which were wrong. Okay, nobody's, nobody's arguing they did something right. But if you uh, rebelled against them, the devil put a curse on you. And if you have a parental curse on you, which most of the people are going to have when they come to see you, that's got to... That is a killer. That has to be broken off of you. So if the person trashed their parents when they were young, that has to be faced. Because yeah. it's the only thing that can happen that a curse pops on you. Yeah. Yeah. Kids get cursed all the time. Yeah. They, don't, they don't understand it. All they understand is I'm facing a parent who is, you know, nuts. And they're hurting me. They're not doing this. They're not providing. They abandon me. Whatever it is. So they react, but not knowing the spiritual ramifications of it. Yeah. So you have to catch that when you're ministering to them. And you can see why blowing demons out of somebody at the park, you know, this, yeah. this is more important than yelling at Jezebel. Yeah. Come out. See that? I mean, Jezebel will yell at you at the park. She'll scream and she'll roll around. But did that person repent of hurting their parents? Did they repent? Did you get that curse off of them? Yeah. Yeah. There's a curse on their life because they told their mother to F off. Yeah. Oh, as soon as you said that, yeah. you were 12 years old, boop. The devil goes, that one's mine. Yeah. Mm. And if you don't do it, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get sick and die young. Here it is. Mm. They're going to be in big trouble. Yeah. So you have to give them that truth. Yeah. That, hey, we got a parental curse here. And this has to be fixed. Okay, well, my parents are dead. Well, that's fine. You repent of that, and then you go to God and apologize to him for what you've done to your parents. Okay? We can get, still get the curse off, even if they're dead. Fathers, don't pro provoke your children to orge rage. Rage. Why not? Demons get into people when they're kids so fast. It's amazing. They just jump in. Yeah. I grew up in a home. Both my parents were drunks. Lots of arguing. Cops, cops coming by all the time. That kind of stuff. White trashy. 
I hated my dad. I had no respect for my mom. When I got born again, man, I was down at the altar, crying, begging for what I said to my parents, rebellion, the whole deal. Phew. I was on my face, begging for mercy. Because I wanted to get that curse broke off me. My mother was dead. My dad was still alive. My dad died three years ago, and we died the best of friends. You know, I had to get that curse off me. Yeah. I hated him. He used to beat my mom. I hated all the stuff he did. I hated him for it. But I was cursing myself, and I didn't know it because I, when I was young, I, I didn't know anything about spiritual things. So I had a lot of pain in life because I dishonored my parents. And it doesn't matter what they did, even if they were 100% at fault, it doesn't matter. You got the curse when you trashed them. Well, I was justified. Number two, they always work in gangs. Okay, and there's certain, there's, there's millions of demons and thousands of different kinds of demons, but these three, these three work in a gang. They're extremely dangerous, and you'll be running into them all the time in your deliverance ministry. Okay? I'm just hitting the uh, highlights today over what your probabilities are. This is what you'll probably run into on a frequent basis while you're helping people. This gang here, they are extremely dangerous, and they all work together. We went over a couple of them already. Uh, here's how the process works, usually. It's a two-phase thing. Phase one, the spirit puts a negative thought in your mind. Yeah. There it went. Okay, so the thought in your mind is a thought they believe you will receive based on their evaluation of your background. So, hypothetically, uh, you had a husband that trashed you, beat you, cheated on you, and cursed you. Okay. Then later on, boop, a thought pops in your mind. Men, men are no damn good. Boop, there it goes. Thought comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Ooh. Well, that's a lie. Now, some men are no good, but some men are great. Right. That's a lie. Yeah. If you accept that thought, The spirit of fear then pops up, and he attacks your soul. And that's where your emotions are. So here you have a thought, men are no good, and I'm afraid of men. I'm going to get abandoned again. I'm, he's going to cheat. They're going to cheat. And they feel. Lie, fear, yeah. control of the person. See that? Yeah. Yeah. Then the coward spirit comes along and says, no, just relax, withdraw. Mm -hmm. you know, don't do anything about it. Yeah. Go sit over there. Mm -hmm. Brother Mike wants you to get that out of there. Oh, don't listen to him. That's scary. Go sit in the back. Yeah. They all work together. Mm -hmm. Procrastinator, mm. coward spirit. Wow. I'm a pro procrastinator. Yes. I can't do anything. I'm always putting stuff off. Um, I always do the project 50%, and then I, I seem to quit. I'm, I got 15 un, unfinished projects at home. What's going on there? Coward spirits. Fear of failure. Mm -hmm. Fear of screwing up. Fear of doing something. Fear of getting criticized. Yeah. I'll just abandon it. I got can you finish the yard? Can you, can you finish loading this up? Can you, are you going to pay that? Did, are you driving up? Why do you leave all these things undone? Yeah. Mm. Wow. wow. In your ministry, you'll be, you'll be banging your head against this wall because you see the problem, you explain it to them. 
and this spirit manifests, and they say, well, I'll do it later. Mm. No, we need to do it now. You're going to get sicker. Yeah. This is going to go bad for you. I care about you. Let's do it now. See, behold, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Well, I don't know. I'm kind of scared. I think I'll, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah. You know how many calls I have not gotten over the years? Yeah. 257,000. Mm. I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get the call. Why? The coward spirit got him. Mm -hmm. I don't want to face it. Mm. See that? Yeah. So, strike one, negative thought. Right. If you accept it, boom. Yeah. Negative emotions. Right. Reinforcing the thought as true. Right. Coward spirit, I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm shy. Yeah. Shy. The result, bondage. While you're interviewing them and praying with them, here's what you're going to run into. The thought goes in their mind. Oh, man, somebody criticized me. Another thought's going to come in. Hey, you know what? Drugs, alcohol, or porn provide you a temporary relief. Remember? That felt good, didn't it? The body kicks in. Oh, a high, a drunk, an orgasm feels good. So then, then he uses your body to reinforce mm -hmm. withdrawing. Yeah. So I can hide behind hooch. I can hide behind drugs. I can hide behind... All right, so when you're working with them, you'll get this in their mind. They're believing some kind of lie, right? Like the, in our society now, uh, white people are at the bottom of the barrel now, particularly males. I'm white and I'm male. I'm so white I could be on the Hallmark television show. I could be an actor. <laughs> Truth, God never sees anybody's race. There is no such thing as a race. I'm not white. See that guy there? He's black. No, he's not. God. See her? See her? She's whiter than I am. God doesn't see that. When you're dead, in heaven, there is no race. There's no races. You can't tell if somebody's... It's gone. There's nothing to it. It's a lie. There's no such thing as racism to God. Everybody's treated the same. Every lie is like that. And then what does he do next? Boom. Hits the soul. <clears throat> Racism. <clears throat> Riots. Yeah. See, that's all soul manifest. Yeah. Based on lies. Mm -hmm. Coming from yeah. racism spirits. Okay. I'm white. I'm, I'm I'm fine. <laughs> the lie comes in. And the Bible calls it a fiery dart. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the lie is coming from a spirit. Mm. And it's usually negative. Yeah. Why? Because God doesn't use negative thoughts to help people. Negative oh. thoughts are demonic. Okay? Yeah. That's why you don't want to cast demons out of people who are not going to repent and renew their mind. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible requires you to renew your mind. You have to renew your mind in order to keep the devil off of you. There's no other way.
If you don't, you'll be struggling the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Negative thoughts lead to negative emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lustful thoughts lead to lustful yeah. emotion. Yeah. Now, why doesn't Tony Robbins work? Because he doesn't understand the spirit world. Okay? And so... You know, everybody, everybody that goes in ministry now, they all want to be Joel Olstein. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They all want to have some giant mega church and yeah. millions of dollars in cash in the bank yeah. and be liked by everybody. Okay, what, what people don't understand is Joel's ministry, th there's no other Joel Olsteins out there, mm -hmm. okay? Because Joel's ministry is set on the foundation of his old man. Okay? He had for decades a hardcore, massively anointed Pentecostal father. Okay? And then when his father got his bigger church, Joel worked for his dad. And he worked in the back room. He did all the technical stuff. Okay? So, uh, you can't be a Joel Osteen because... You didn't have a father like him. You didn't work in the back room all those years yeah. as an understudy and as a servant. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then his dad died. And then Joel took over the thing. See that? Yeah. And so his concept was, oh, my God, I cannot be like my dad. I don't have that kind of anointing. I can't preach like that. I, I'm a zilch compared to my dad. So he flipped and went into the power of positive thinking ministry. See? And so that took off like crazy because there were so many sick people in America. They desperately needed somebody to give them an encouraging, positive word. Yeah. Unlike myself. Yeah. Positive, <laughs> encouraging words. See, I don't have the, I don't have that anointing. So, his ministry boomed. See, and he's a, he has millions of dollars in the bank. They have a gigantic megachurch. Okay? Wouldn't know a demon if it bit him in the face. See that. The power of positive thinking is demonic. Mm. You can't get delivered or healed from the power of positive thinking, okay? I can't pull a Joel Olstein today and get you delivered. I, 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 I'm able. I'm, I'm, I'm anointed. I'm blessed. I'm white. Okay, that's not going to work. Okay. I had to go through repentance. I had to go through, I had to yeah. toil down here in the sewer yeah. of life. Come on. Is what he's saying good? Yeah, a lot of it's fantastic and great stuff, you know, positive, helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're not going there. We're going to, into the sanctum of the devil. Yeah. We're not positive. Think yeah. That's not going to help us. we got yeah. God's word. I know I'm better. I'm, you know, stop. Yeah. Okay, you're not better. Nah. Yeah. Actually, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get delivered and yeah. get you on your way. On. Holy Ghost. Yeah. Come on. It's thoughts in the mind, and then it's negative emotions in your soul. Mm. 
Huh? Now, you can help these people get delivered by showing them you can track your spirits in your body by tracking your symptoms. Mm. Spirits always leave symptoms. See? So if I go to a park and start yelling at Ahab, I'm not really helping that person. What's the real problem? Mm -hmm. He hated his dad mm -hmm. when he was this, you know, his dad beat him. His mother married this guy who beat him. And on and on it went. That's the root of the issue, mm -hmm. not Ahab. Ahab got in later. Mm -hmm. That got in here. Yeah. So when you're ministering, if you go back here, yeah when they were young, not Ahab here. Ahab got in two months ago or two years ago. This got in in grade school or something. Yeah. You, you with me? Yeah. If you just blow Ahab out, he'll just, Ahab, come back next week. Yeah. Knock on the door again. Hey, you remember that beating your dad gave you? Yeah. How about some self-pity? Whoop, he jumps back in. Yeah. Mm. Didn't remove the mind. Demons have, they know all the openings, right? Yeah. Some people call them portals, whatever you call them. Yeah. It's an entryway of sin mm -hmm. into the person, yeah. which is either a lie, negative lie, thought, or a negative emotion. They'll get right back in. And if you don't correct this cycle, it's going to end up what? A spiritual dog and pony show. It's going to, they're going to be struggling decade in and decade over and over and over. How do you know all these things? I did it. I've done that. And I was a wonderful Christian. I could have signed autographs. <laughs> And I was sick. This is what you'll run into most often. Anxiety issues and depression. Most Christians have one or these two. Many times both. Here's what you're going to teach them. One Christian and another Christian can see the exact same set of circumstances, exactly, and react totally differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. King Saul looked at Goliath and reacted like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Yeah. King David saw the same person at the same time, under the same circumstances, but thought, where's my stones? Yeah. So you, when you're trying to help these people, you've got to get them to see that these thoughts in their mind are Saul's thoughts. Mm -hmm. They gotta repent of it. And they have to renew their mind and receive David's thoughts. Where's my stones? Let's see, we got Goliath here. How many brothers he got? Four. Mm -hmm. I'll go get five stones. Mm. See that? Same circumstances, nothing different, but received completely different from the person. Mm -hmm. One had a renewed mind. The other one was tormented by fear demons, mm -hmm. negative thoughts, negative emotions. Saul had anxiety and depression. David had the opposite. Mm -hmm. He wanted to get the stones and get going. Yeah. Same circumstance, same person. Goliath was just as real to David as he was to Saul, correct? Mm -hmm. Same guy, same circumstance. Everything's same. Yeah. Perceived differently. So you have to get this person to isolate the negative thought, catch the lie, and repent of it. 
Because only truth brings healing, lies bring bondage. From childhood to adulthood, the devil will beat on you constantly with this process. Negative thoughts react negatively, emotionally. Negative thoughts, use your emotions to react to that. You ever been seen an MMA fight? These poor guys get CTE after one fight. But at the weigh-in, they're all yelling at each other, cursing and swearing like crazy. Well, the negative thoughts are coming in, and the emotions, the demons are manifesting. Okay, you can't be an MMA fighter and not have demons. Mm -hmm. You need that extra strength and power. And the demons give it to you. Mm -hmm. They give you a fearless attitude. Go in there and get your face kicked in. Yeah. No problem. Wow. Boom, the guy got CTE after two fights. Yeah. <clears throat> they can't control their emotions. Wow. Being manipulated by Satan. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Mike Tyson and Holyfield fought. Remember that? Yeah. Mike, Mike's at the way in. His demons are manifest. He's yelling like crazy, threatening him, cussing at him. Just, and Holyfield just sitting there like a bump on a log, not doing nothing. Why? Well, everything Mike was saying, his demons were yelling at him. Holyfield was not receiving those thoughts. Mm. He just kind of, whatever. Wow. And therefore, if you catch the thought, the emotions don't have a chance to fire. Mm. If you don't catch the thought, it transfers down. Boom, you got a mess on your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Holyfield won. Remember? Yeah. Remember that fight? Tyson, from the time he was this little, nothing but heartache, sorrow, misfortune, dysfunctional families, gangs, beating. The poor guy went through every conceivable truckload of crap you've ever seen. Right. Sick, as, sick as a dog, totally demon-possessed. Same process. Negative thought, negative emotion. Christian, you're praying for, same process. Negative thought, soulish emotions that are negative. And that's how he controls people. He controls them through their negative emotions. He gets them to react or overreact to certain stimulation. The Holy Ghost, after you renew your mind, gives you the holy field system where you just sit there and let the other person rant and rave and you don't respond to it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You're not, you don't go there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You used to go there. Mm -hmm. And you used to pitch fit too. Yeah. How dare you say that to me? What? Yeah. You go and talk to me like, a, what you talking about, Willis? Yeah. <laughs> now, now the guy flares up and you go, hmm, okay. I'm fine. See the difference? The devil wants to control your emotions, and that's how he beats everybody. Here's how he does it. From the time you're a child to adulthood, Psalms 55. All this stuff just keeps coming in on you, trashing you pounding on you, criticizing you, degrading you, not supporting you, abandoning you. It goes on and on and on. Two main areas, childhood, childhood and then kindergarten or first grade. Those are the two biggies, okay? You're born here with this family, then you go to school. That's the devil. Mm. That's how he takes you. Yeah. So you go raised by two parents who are kooks, Bullying, first, second, third grade, whatever it is. By the time you're ready to go to high school, you're so jacked up, it's unreal. He's got you. 
He teaches you to receive negative thoughts and he teaches you to react negatively, emotionally. And he's controlling you like a puppet. And then it gets worse. My heart, oh man, you get these soul wounds that are just killing you. You feel like dying. Sometimes you wish you were dead. And fear comes upon trembling, panic attacks start developing in your soul. You'd be afraid of everything after a while. Everything's scary. It's all a process they set up from childhood, all planned out to get the person you're trying to help to use their emotions to live. Instead of walking by faith, they walk by feelings and they fail. Mm -hmm. yeah. Failure always follows emotional people. The devil always pulls them around by their emotions. Mm. Are you not supposed to have emotions? Of course you are. Jesus had emotions. He lost his temper, he'd get furious, but it was against the devil and sin. Mm -hmm. See that he wasn't re, re fighting back because, oh, somebody doesn't like me. Yeah. I'm offended. Oh, I got low self-esteem. Yeah. I better go pray and ask Father to help me with this self-pity. That never happened. Yeah. Jesus had all kinds of emotions, but they were all directed correctly. You're not supposed to be a zombie. God doesn't want you to be, emotions were given you by your creator. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with emotions. The devil bastardizes everything God does. He wants your mind. He wants your emotions. There's nothing wrong with your mind. God gave you a mind. It's a good thing. Your emotions are a good thing. But he always pollutes everything that's good. Mm. And he uses the family first to get to you. Then he uses school. Mm. Then they start... After a while, you'll run into these people you're ministering to who are afraid of stuff that isn't even there. But what if... Yeah. Dude, please. Well, what if they don't like me? What if they don't accept me? What if, what if that happens? What if, what, if there's, what if there's a full moon? What if there's an apocalypse? What if... <laughs> Stop. Have you ever met a what-if person? Mm -hmm. They drive you nuts. Yeah. Listen, here's how we'll do it. It just should work. Let's try. If something happens, we'll modify it. It's all good. Mm -hmm. Well, what if that happens? What if that happens? Oh my God. This is going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stop it. St yeah. That's them manifesting. Mm. Fear. Yeah. There's no fear here. This is what we call a what? A phobia. Mm -hmm. A phobia is an unrealistic fear. Yeah. Man. When I was a secular counselor, I had people come in and have phobias. Number one phobia, uh, I'm not sure what it is anymore, but the top ones are fear of death, fear of the dark. What was the other? Public, Just, speaking. public speaking, public speaking. Fear of what? <laughs> Doing the dishes? Is that what you, yeah. Oh, that would be number one. But those are the main things. I, I forgot, I just, free, I just drew a blank here, age thing. But uh, fear of the dark, fear of, of, of public speaking. Now, I had that when I was a freshman. I was like, I was like panicking. <clears throat> that, is, that is a phobia. There's no fear there. There's nothing there. There's nothing wrong except what you are fearing. It's all about you. You have a phobia. Well, I got a fear of black cats. <laughs> no, look at there's nothing wrong with a black cat. I mean, I don't, I don't really like cats, but <laughs> there's nothing wrong with a cat morally. A cat's a cat. Oh, but if they're black and they cross your path, stop. Okay, okay. Let me get that bat. Come over here. I, <laughs> that's a phobia. There's nothing wrong. It's dark. I sleep with the lights on. 
No, that's a fear spirit. You've got an anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. Something happened to you when you were young when it was dark, and now you've got to have the light on. That's how he got in, see? And you have to help that person get it out. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Yeah. But it's real to you. Mm -hmm. See? Something that's totally not real is real to that person, and you'll have to deal with it on that level. Now, if I said, listen, uh, I'm going to follow you home. I'm going to go to your church tomorrow, and I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to start preaching to your pastor about deliverance right in the middle of the congregation. Now, that's not a phobia. That's a legitimate fear. You don't know me. I could be a complete psycho up here. You don't live with me. Good for you. But a phobia is a completely manufactured fear that has no basis in fact. But it does to them. If you've got black cats, you don't like them, that's a real phobia to that person. And they have to repent of it. And they have to face it. And you have to get them to do it. Because you're helping them, right? You're going to help them do it. This poor guy grew up. He hated his dad. His dad was beating the kids, beating them all the time, yelling at them, everything. And Michael had a very soft heart. He was a very loving person, and he was gentle. Mm -hmm. His brothers were tougher, but Michael was gentle. Yeah. And his dad hurt Michael more than the other brothers. He hurt, he hurt everybody, yeah. uh, but he hurt him the most. Yeah. And so as he grew up, the demons took over his mind and said, hey, you look like your dad. Mm. And then they told him, hey, you've got body dysmorphic disorder, BDD, and you've got to get rid of this nose. You've got to get these eyes. You look like your dad. So you see your dad there? In his mind, yes. in his mind, wow. he saw himself. He was not ugly. He was a good-looking guy. There was nothing wrong with him. He should have never had one surgery. The guy looked fantastic. But in his mind, he looked like his dad. And he had developed this chronic terror of his father, yeah. of beating him again, controlling him, yelling at him. And Michael was loving and wanted out of that system. And he wanted everything to do with his dad out of his soul. So he changed his face, and, and he didn't even look like himself anymore, which was his goal. He didn't want to look like dad. Those are, that's all phobias. Those are all demonic fears. They're not real. It's not real. And you're going to run into Christians who have this. They have body dysmorphia. They don't like the way they look. They don't like their face. They don't like their body. And the devil will pound on them. Man, you're fat. Man, you're stupid. Man, you're ugly. My God, you look bad. And they'll beat on them. Negative thought comes in. Then the emotions comes in. Oh, my gosh, I'm not attractive. I'm not, I'm not thin. I'm, I'm not good looking. I'm fat. Yeah. And then suddenly there goes the self-esteem, low self-concept, self-hatred. See that? All triggered here first, mm -hmm. then by the emotions here. If you catch it here and stop it, you can save them from this. That'll cut the system. When you're young, kids pick up spirits. And in a dysfunctional family or a family that has a history of things like witchcraft, sorcery, masonry, different things in the family tree, the kids will start experiencing spiritual events as a child. Okay? They don't understand in their family tree, these people let in some demons on steroids mm -hmm. long before they were born. But these spirits are in the family tree, so now they're haunting the kid at night. They're visiting them in their rooms, they're visiting them in their dreams. Things are happening to the kid they don't understand. Yeah. And the goal is to develop an anxiety disorder in the child. Yeah. And the shadow figures that come in your bedroom at night, they're real. They come in and you can sense them there while you're sleeping. Sometimes they'll wake them up. You're kind of, oh my God, I got a bad feeling. Somebody's in the room here. And then you don't want to move. See, the fear demons are now on top of you. And you're going... Maybe if I just not breathe and lay here, it'll go away. And there's 
you look up and there's some fuzzy thing in the corner there. There he is. There he is in the family tree demons are coming after you now. See, they go down the tree and pick off everybody in the family. Or sometimes uh, you have these spirits. You, sometimes they'll actually sit on your bed. Mm. While you're laying there, you can feel kind of an indentation at the end of the bed. I mean, it's creepy. It's creepy. And that's him. They're stalkers. They're night stalkers. They come in. They're letting you know that they're around. And then at a certain age, early teens or something like that, they disappear. And that means they got in. So now that, that guy there is now inside this kid. Wow. This guy here, he's in there. Now they're gone. They don't come to the room anymore. Wow. Some women who have, who have married a promiscuous men or had a family tree of incest, prostitution, promiscuity, different things. They have these lust demons come over them at night. Some of them actually physically manipulate their genitals. Or Some people have told me they actually had intercourse with them. But anyway, this lust demon here is usually a spirit spouse. So if this gal here, yep. she probably married a guy or had a couple ex-husbands who had lust problems, porn problems, cheating problems, group sex, whatever it is, bisexual, went for anal this week, and then he comes back to her for that week. So these spirit spouses come in at night, and they're terrifying. Mm. And they can actually literally feel them manipulating their body. This, wow. isn't, even, this isn't even a joke. This wow. is a fact. They come right in, and you can feel them hovering over you sometimes or you feel them above the bed and you, and you don't want to look and you, mm. Mm, uh, yeah. or uh, family trees that have a lot of bad deaths in them, you know, car wrecks, overdoses, different things, shootings, muggy. The family members will come by and visit you at night sometimes. There's grandpa, there's grandma. There, Oh, they're just, they're just there to give you comfort, let you know they're okay. No, they're not. They're, they're there. They're going to get inside you. Wow. 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 They come in at night. They're night stalkers. Mm. Yeah. Look, here, uh, if you marry this man, you didn't marry that man. You married everything about that man. His in-laws, okay, they're, they're nuts. They're grandparents, they're super nuts. And you don't know what spiritually they've been, this guy's been involved in. She just loves him. Oh, I'm loving him. I'm in love. Okay, I'm in love is the worst reason to get married. You don't know you're marrying everything about that person. So if you married somebody who was sleeping with Tom, Dick, and Harry, and that and more, those spirits entered that male's body or that woman's body, and you married them. You married them. What happens next? They transfer into you. It happens all the time. So when you're ministering to them, look, if you run into somebody who's got multiple broken marriages, multiple broken relationships, you know that's fear and rejection and so on, but you know there's also transfers involved. Mm. So I got to get Dave's demons out of Bertha and on and on. See that? Because they probably had night stalkers when they were little and didn't bother to tell you about it. That's not something you normally go over on your honeymoon. Honey, you want to get engaged? I sure do. I love you. Oh, you do? But hold on a minute. Uh, my dad was a sorcerer. My mother uh, ro flew around the living room on a broom, and uh, I slept with uh, f 50 women, and two of them were trans, and they don't, nobody goes over that when you're, yeah. nobody's, you want to get engaged? That's not something you go through at Denny's, yeah. right, or a 10th date. They don't want to tell anybody, yeah. or they may not know it. Come on. Yeah. Come on. See, so in Christianity, ideally, <laughs> no one is to get married 
to anybody until God says, marry that person. <laughs> but since nobody does that, right. we evaluate the person on our own yeah. and take our chances. Right. It's a crapshoot, spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. Spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. So then later on when you're ministering to them, you know, they've had three divorces. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and so now they're my age. And then they're asking themselves a question. I mean, how, how many times in life do you want to lose half your stuff? Mm. Do I need to get involved in another relationship? <laughs> your job is to save them from that. Yeah. Listen, you're being led around by demons. They're bringing you these spouses. They pick them out and they, they bring them in. And then they tell them to be on their best behavior while they suck you in. Mm. Then, you go, then after the honeymoon, you roll over and Godzilla's laying there. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. They, you said you were going to go to church. You said you were going to yeah. love me. You said you were going to, well, what happened to that? Yeah. You know, and these night stalkers are going... <laughs> You hear a giggle in the background. Yeah. Uh, we got this one. Yeah. God picked out a spouse for you. Yeah. Just be patient. Yeah. All right, that's enough of night stalkers. Mm. Here's another monster that comes in at night. Job's friends, one of his friends had a sleep paralysis event. Remember that? Job chapter 4. He was telling Job about it. There it was right there. You're, you're laying in bed at night, and you're sleeping, and then all of a sudden, something doesn't feel right. And you kind of wake up, but you don't wake up. You're kind of halfway between sleeping, kind of halfway between wake. You're kind of in a mixed dream there, and you know something's wrong. And it's a sensing thing, and you start to get afraid, just like this guy. Then he started to have a panic attack. He started trembling. So his soul starts manifesting. See that? And so all of a sudden, now you feel, I can't move. And you decide, well, I better get Jesus here. And you start to call out for Jesus. And you can't get it out of your mouth. And it's like trapped right here. G G G and then he says, a night stalker here that I was just mentioning happened to this guy 3,000 years ago. This was written 3,000 years ago. This guy had sleep paralysis, Job chapter 4. And he couldn't see. He looked up and he saw something in the room, but he couldn't quite, you know, figure it out. It was like fuzzy. That, that's a night stalker. And then, he, then sometimes they talk to you. You can hear them. Or you can hear them breathing. <sighs> like that. And that's even creepier. All right, how's this, how's this going? Any problems here? Any questions right now before we go to this part? This part's very important next. Any questions before we go to this part? How are we doing on our time? Hey, Ann, how's the time? We got an hour? Okay. What did she say? Yeah. yeah. Any questions before we go to this section? Nobody, okay. Now, uh, have you ever talked to somebody that had almost like a separate personality? They seem this way, and then all of a sudden there's a switch, and you're going, boy, that sounds like a different person. <clears throat> well, it's in the Bible here. Uh, let's go over this first. The weapons of our warfare are not sarks, fleshly. The weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, but mighty to God to the pulling down of what? A kuruma, what is, an, what is that? That is a fortress. Mm. And so what happens is, over a period of time, these spirits train your mind to believe lies. And they start stacking up in your mind. And Paul said it's like a fortress loaded with lies mm -hmm. in the person's head. And because it's a fortress... You can't fix it because you can't get into a fortress. Yeah. yeah. All right, it says the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, 
but mighty to the God to the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down imaginations, right? And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What high thing? This thing, hoopsama. There it is. It's a fort. It's a fortress that keeps building on itself, like the Empire State Building. Over a period of years, this person has so many lies in their head, they don't know the truth from f lies anymore. Yeah. James chapter 1. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A dipsychus is a person that has two souls. The first soul is your real soul that you were born with, that God gave you, and the other one is a fake soul hiding in this fortress in your mind. Wow. Following that? Adepsicus is someone who has two souls. One's fake. So is that, is that something like ego? Is, could ego be no, that, as a second soul? No, no, no that, that could be part of it. Okay. Yeah. Like no. Like, like they're similar in having two personalities. Okay. That's right. Okay. Similar to two personalities. Okay. okay. Uh, she started to go with Sigmund Freud on me there. <laughs> and, uh, and let's get this one out. <laughs> okay, it says um, a double minded, two souled Christian person is what? A cast of us inconsistent. Up, down, in, out. Hey, you want to go to the ball game? Yeah. Hey, we're getting ready to leave. I don't want to go. You know, constantly driving everybody around them nuts. nuts. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're not sure which personality you're going to run into that day. It happens a lot at work. Yeah. Because these, the second soul, the fake one, is frequently stimulated by stress, mm -hmm. which occurs a lot at work. And a lot of bosses have that, you know. Can we talk to the boss about this? Well, wait a minute. I know. The other soul's in there. Let's wait and we'll approach it later. You don't, how's your wife doing? Oh, she was fine yesterday, but today she's swinging from the channel. Yeah. The other personality, the, uh, the other people have to monitor it to know which personality is popping up today. Huh? They're not sure. And so as you relate to that person over a long period of time, you learn how to approach, when to retreat, what to bring up, mm, what not to bring up, almost in a way like walking on eggshells. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're just not sure what, who you're going to be talking to today. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's talking about Christians here. Today they believe, oh, today, no. God's not going to help me. Yeah. Yesterday was, I believe God, yeah. I just saw Joel Holstein. <laughs> Today, I saw Brother Mike. Oh, my God. Yeah. What am I going to do? Mm. How can I get another vaccine? <laughs> up, down, up. Oh, frustrating. Yeah. And they never get their prayers answered because this other soul is doing everything it can to stop mm. the answers to their prayer and block their anointing, yeah. their healing, their deliverance. All of it. Okay. They end up living yo-yo Christian lives. Wow. Up, down, up, down. Oh, it's so frustrating. The churches can't stand these people because they can't depend on them. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dave, you going to help us during the Christmas program? Absolutely. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Dave? He's not. Yeah. Dave, don't show up. Yeah. Unfortunately, the pastor who knows nothing about what I'm talking about mm. caught Dave on this day yeah. here, right. but Christmas right. Christmas dinner was there. Yeah. Dave gone. Yeah. Yo-yo Christian lives. I believe. I don't believe. Mm -hmm. I love you. I don't love you. Mm -hmm. I'm being nice. I'm not. Yeah. Wow. Drive you nuts. One soul's real, this one here, God-given soul. The other one is fake. And the demons built this fake soul up over a period of years 
putting negative thoughts in, negative emotions, this other personality begins to develop. It doesn't happen from Tuesday to Wednesday. Right. This is a long process, years in the making. Yeah. So if you run into somebody like this you're ministering to, that started years ago. This, is, this did not start Wednesday. Yeah. You got to go back. All right, how can they be healed? You got to have these scriptures here in your repertoire in your deliverance ministry. Here it is, James 4, 7 through 8. Here we go. This person that's coming to you has to submit themselves to God. Not the pastor, not you, not, not the denomination. This all this between that person and God. There's nobody else involved. You must resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, anthistomy means to oppose yeah. the devil, not, not to do the Muhammad Ali rope-a-dope. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Bang, boom, yeah, yeah. boom. Okay, that's not resisting the devil by taking a beating. Yeah. Dishing yeah. one out is what God has called you to do. Yeah. You dish out Whoa. the beatings, not take them anymore. That's what the word means. And cease to me. Stand up against him. What will he do? He'll flee. You have the Holy Ghost. That's why. Draw an eye to God. You've got to get the person to do it. So, King Saul types never get delivered. Arrogance, pride. Mm -hmm. the, no, they. Not going to work. Humbleness gets healing. Draw an eye to God, he'll draw an eye to you. You've got to teach the person, look, you've got to go first. God's not going to go first. He already told you to come in and see me. Yeah. Okay? Now you go first, then God will move. Yeah. So I've got to get the person to repent and change first, yeah. and then the Holy Spirit moves in. Yeah. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Okay, what have you been doing? You've got to repent. You've got to change. And he's talking about Christians here, not sinners. Right. Change your hands, you sinners. The Greek word here is hermartalus. It means people who practice sin regularly. Who are those people? Well, sinners do it all the time, but church people do it half the time. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever interviewed anybody at your church? You're going, my God, these people are heathen. <laughs> you got to get them to change. They have to repent. Repentance and deliverance is an absolute requirement. Mm. Purify your hearts. Mm -hmm. You what? Double Here you go. Yeah. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Here you go. These kind of people are fantastic for God. Mm. King David was a man after God's own heart. Why? God loved adultery and murder? No. David was a repenter. Yeah. Mm. He was a broken man. Well, I listen, things aren't going too well for me. <laughs> no, laughter is a defense mechanism you developed when you were being abused as a child. You learn to laugh everything off. Okay? If you laugh off spiritual things, Mm. Dead in the water. Yeah. You can't get anything from God unless you learn to do this. It's not possible. Yeah. You know. I mean, almost 100%, not quite, over the years, 100% of the people that can do this, demons just fly out of them. <laughs> Rotten sinners, hardened sinners. Yeah. I told you the story about that guy who came from Mexico. Rick saw him at the Deliverance Center. He was an enforcer in the cartel 
Sinaloa cartel. It's an enforcer. What was his job? Uh, was he driving Uber? No. He went around with a machete and chopped people up. Okay. He might have been an Uber. We didn't ask him, but this guy chopped people up. 13 people he had murdered. That was a job. And the uh, guy repented. And demons were flying out of this guy like rockets. Mm. What's the moral of that story? You can be healed. Yeah. I don't think we have any enforcers here tonight. I don't think any of you have chopped somebody to death. If you have, don't raise your, <laughs> your hands. But I'll tell you what, if the Spirit of God will jump on somebody who was working for the cartels, chopping people up, oh. you're in. You're in, honey. You're in. Grace yeah. covers it. Yeah. That's the cross of Calvary. Yeah. Covers an enforcer. Mm. Yeah. These are the kind of people you want. So... When you see this happening in your deliverance session with somebody, you just go for it because they're going to get delivered. These people get delivered real easy. And they make your job easy. To get delivered, you have to give them the understanding of the, the power of the blood of Christ. You have to get them to see that somehow. It's, it's the key to everything we have and everything we are. It's the key to healing and deliverance and heaven and everything else. And if the person doesn't understand these scriptures, you know, you can help them with it by showing them how powerful the blood of Christ is and that uh, any person can be healed, forgiven, or delivered. Yeah. Any person, mm -hmm. no matter what they did. Yeah. But you can't be healed or delivered if you won't forgive them. Okay? If you won't change, if you won't repent, well, that's a different story. But anybody who understands this can be healed without an exception. <laughs> you have to teach them to use their authority. Okay? You have to teach them to fight back. Yeah. That's your job. You've got to show them they, that they can be healed. And you have to do it. God's not going to do everything for you. Mm. Right? Yeah. Wigglesworth's entire ministry is based on that. You do something... God will do something, right? And he would do something. Well, I don't think they can do it. Yes, you did. Yes, they can. Right here it is. God gave every, every person faith. Every person has it. It's just buried under a bunch of lies and negative emotions. And you can unbury them. You help them. Okay, now I'll close with this then here. John 14, God, as we mentioned, has unconditional love for you, agape, and believe it or not, John 16, phileo, he likes you. Okay? Yeah. You can love somebody and not like them. Wow. Ask any mother. You have five boys there. <laughs> you love all of them, yeah. but you like these two better than this one's, this one's Robin uh, Circle Case and this one's from college. <laughs> you like that one better, phileo. You love them all. Yes. Uh, well, God loves you and likes you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That should have got one amen. Wait, so is there such thing as uh, what they call deliverance? Uh, deliverance light? No, yeah. no, 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 oh, no. Right. It's like... Uh, <clears throat> 
like a junkie, deliverance junkie. Have you heard that term before? Yeah, I run into them all the time. Okay. Is, is that a thing? A real oh, sure. Thing? Yeah, it's terrible. Okay. Yeah, they're not renewing their mind and they're not changing. So they keep coming back to deliverance. Okay. And that's a different Bible study. But you're going to have to weed those people out because they'll wear you out. Yeah. I stay with them a little while and give them grace, 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 and then I dump them. Because they're, they're a plant. The, the devil sent them in to wear you out. Okay. They'll wear you That's out. That's what I'm looking for. Because I'm, cause I'm thinking like you receive the grace. And it, it, it takes people for maybe a long time to fully be delivered. Or maybe they... Well, again, that's their free will. Okay. And that they're not renewing their mind. They're not changing. Okay. And they're continuing to listen to negative thoughts in their head. Okay. They're not con controlling their emotion. Yeah. Some people don't just won't do it or they do it. It takes them years to do it. I had a schizophrenic I worked with one time that took a year and a half to get rid of all the demons. Schizophrenia demons. Mm -hmm. Took him a year and a half to get healed. Okay. And after that, he was completely well. No more voices. Nice. And then five years later, it took four and a half years for him to get delivered to lust demons. Well, he wanted to get rid of schizophrenia demons, yeah. but he kind of... Was on the fence about it. Yeah, so that took four and a half years. Schizophrenia took a year and a half. Okay. It's all free will. Yes, sir. It's all free will based on, based on your free will. If you, if you don't hate it, then you've got to live with it. Wow. Yeah. The Bible says we are to hate what God hates and yeah. love what he loves. Yeah. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. Yeah. Hate is a tremendous blessing. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah. Now see these, va these uh, 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 different things. D don't worry about those things. Don't, don't focus on manifestations. That's for the people on YouTube. You're, you've got a legitimate ministry. You want to see these people help. So if they're not roaring or doing backflips, just, I just ignore that stuff. I get them repent. They have to repent here. It's in your heart. Yeah. Okay. Any questions before we go to prayer? No questions? Good. Oh. No, yes, ma'am. What she say? She bothering you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> and this chick's got to go. <laughs> Any questions on over this side? <laughs> Let me. I got one. I got one. What's your question? I mean, I know this has been debated all the time, but uh, what, how do you respond to somebody who says? Um, the Holy Spirit can't live the same place as a demon. What's a good response? Well, I just explained it. Now, <clears throat> your Holy Spirit's in your spirit, man, and your uh, demons are in your body. Mm. Or they're in your brain. Yeah. So they're giving you your mental illness here or physical illness there, whatever it is. Okay? But your spirit man's perfect. Mm. So Christians can't be possessed. It's not possible because the spirit man's sanctified. Right? That's how you explain it. And then the next question you tell them is, can you show me a scripture that says Christians can't have demons? As soon as you say that, they'll drop their drawers and faint. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and that, the argument's over. Yeah. Oh, troublemaker. Troublemaker. I'll straighten her out for you, sir. We'll talk about it. So... Spirits, they, um, they come in through the heart places, like a person got heart somewhere in the past, right? And the spirits um, started to use this, this wound place to mm -hmm. go into the body. Oh, right? wound, uh, yeah, yeah right? was, yes. So to figure out the root cause that leads the spirits to come to the person, can we do it only with Holy Ghost then, right, to get to the... To understand where it came from? Well, I would. I mean, 
if you do it like I used to do as a secular counselor, you can you know putter around with it and they'll feel a little better. But I, what we're trying to get them healed. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost is the only healer. I don't have any healing powers of any kind. Mm -hmm. I'm just a regular guy. Yeah. He is. Yeah. 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 So it can just take time to get to the. It takes time, time for you. No, for the person to offer yourself to figure out what is the actual root. Well, it might, yeah, but you got to, you got to have a, you know, you love them and you have a little patience and you kind of work through it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I don't get everything immediately. Yeah. You got to be patient with people. Yeah. You can see I'm very patient. There's an example there. <laughs> Yeah, Actually, right? All good. Uh, like, personally, I've been trying to deliver myself from issues with rejection. From? Feeling from fear, who? fear of rejection. From People. Who? When you were little, somebody. I guess, yeah. Who was it? Sister. What did she do to you? Huh? What did she do to you? Couldn't accept me. Your sister didn't like you? Uh, she rejected she you. She didn't like what I represented, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's so the best. Like, you were how old? Since, uh, since four years old, five years old. I don't know. Two, one. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. So she sounds like she got a rejection demon from her sister. Did your mother do the same? Probably. <laughs> Probably it was your mother. Now, did your mother reject you? Based on some memories, the feeling associations. Well, based on your actual memory, did your mother reject you? No, I, don't, I wouldn't say. No. Okay, well that you wouldn't focus on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if the person can't remember it, go to the next thing, because those could be implanted memories. But if she does remember her sister, then that's legitimate. And you would go after that, okay? Can there be like a lie? Can there be what? Everybody delivered, but then. Uh, Can there be what? Like a lie that the, the person is already a delivered, lie. but there is a lie that the person or I still need deliverance for this, but actually, it's there's nothing, there's nothing there to repent anymore. For, in terms of rejection from childhood. Well, that might be true, yeah, but you, you just said you had rejection. A minute ago, didn't she? Yeah. Okay, so that means it's there's something there. Did you hear her say that? Yeah. Yeah, so that's not a lie. You you were feeling it, and then you mem remembered your sister. That's what she said, wasn't it? So that would be something that has to come out of there. What's your sister's name? What's your sister's name? Um, First name. Stacia. Stacia. Yeah. Okay. Come come down here. Yeah, now this guest gal here has had uh, a bunch of bad men abuse her, use her. Come on, here. Come on. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Just face me, okay? Mm -hmm. right, are you ready? You gonna do it? You gonna do it? You ready? Yes. Okay. There we go. Who's next? Anybody else? Right. Who's next? <clears throat> Anybody need prayer? Come on down. Come on, sweetheart. <clears throat> yeah. No, here, here. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Were, were you verbally abused real bad in your past? Trashed? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> now, this gal here is verbally trashed and ruined. And she's got scars on her soul, bad in there. And she used to hate herself, didn't you? And this gal here, very intelligent, friendly, likable. The demons always send her a bad man. And they just, you know, and she gives and then they step on it. She tries to fix it and then they throw it, throw it down. Yeah, she has wounds on her soul. And she said she had rejection from her sister, so I believe her. What are you up here for? Uh, What's wrong with you? A couple things. I would say anger. Um, even as I say it, like, 
It's a violent anger. And then what age did that start? It started when I was, the day my father left me on the stairs, and I swore. Oh, I how old were you? Probably five. Oh, hear that? Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? That's when the thing. That's the memory I remember, and I remember like just shutting down and up. Yeah. It was never the same since. Shutting down and never the same. That's the anger spirit got in there. Now, anger demons are usually right in this area here, right in there. Go up in there. Okay. What's your dad's name? Same name as mine, JK. JK is in there. Do you hear that? That's how they do it. His dad left him on the stairs. That should have never happened. Never. Probably uh, a little bit of anger and uh, just abused like as a kid a little bit. Who abused you? Uh, cousin. What did he do to you? Just like, and an aunt that would just uh, like feed us like food that they didn't feed them or like sit me and my brother in the corner make us feel like we did something wrong all the time like lock us in the bathroom and stuff like that. What was his name? Uh, Rich, Richie. Richie. Uh -huh. What's wrong with you? Definitely lots of anxiety. And of from what? There's a lot. <laughs> what triggers it? Maybe it is, or it's just a fear and like rejection stuff. I started, it started a long time ago though, and it man, I was actually speaking to someone in back that's manifested into like a physical form. And until you were talking, like it seems obvious, but the thing that they diagnosed me with is just like my body attacking itself. They diagnosed you with what? MS. Oh, you have MS. Oh, okay, now autoimmune diseases are soul issues. So she. At some time in childhood, was hard on herself, critical, anxiety. Huh? See that? What's wrong with you? Oh. Being put on the spot. Being put on the spot. Now, see, she has a coward demon. See that? But she's overcoming it, you know why? She came down here. See that? That means the devil's in trouble. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's pray. You ready? Thank you, Jesus. Um, my my baby, I want to pray for her. She had a situation where uh, our friend's son tried to touch her. Okay. Uh, she. That's not our problem. Okay. You're, you're the problem. Okay. You're in charge of her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She, she's easy to heal. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let mama go for a minute, would you? Yeah, a girl. Close your eyes now. What's he got? Downs? Downs? This is um, autism. Mm -hmm. Autism. Autism. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're the mother? Mm hmm. Okay. You let her on my Zoom call. Yeah. Call yeah. her spicy. Yeah. yeah. Call her what? Spicy. Spicy. Yeah, have you gone through deliverance yet? Yes. You have? Yeah, for okay. multiple things. Multiple things? <laughs> What's left? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I'm just she's just starting the journey. What's the, what's wrong with her? Just starting the journey. Okay. I'm just um, critical mom. You, it's my mom. It's not very, go last. Is your mother critical of oh, you and oh, hard yeah. on you? She's been what was her name? Her name is Linda. She's yeah. Linda, okay. Will he sit by himself? Yeah. Okay, have him sit over there. Thank you, Jesus. Now, ready? Close your eyes now. Thank you, Lord. Father, I, I want to tell you something. Like, I am so grateful for what you have done tonight. I am so... I'm thrilled. <laughs> I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. <laughs> Thank you for caring. Thank you for caring. Here's your warriors standing here, Lord. Here's your people. And they didn't come here to see me today. Nobody in their right mind would. 
They came to see you. And you won't disappoint. I'm asking you to forgive every person here tonight who receives negative thoughts in their mind and keeps them and gives the devil a stronghold. I'm asking you to forgive every person here that just lets their condition alone, that keeps living with the problem. This faith healer guy standing here has anger problems from the time his dad left him on the steps. He doesn't have a dad anymore. He has a heavenly father that would never leave him anywhere, ever. I wish his dad was here tonight. I'd pray my guts up for him. I'd explain to him what he'd done to his son. But I don't need his dad here, though. His heavenly father's here. And I'm asking you to forgive him for leaving this anger problem in there for all these years. He was a kid when it happened. I'm asking you to forgive this man of God here, so intelligent. And he's left himself in this condition all these years, hasn't cried out. I'm asking you to forgive, Lord, this woman of God here who harbors this anxiety, this fear of men. Dear God, I'm asking you to forgive and give them the anointing to change. I'm asking you to forgive this girl here for all this anxiety she carries around with her. Come out, devil. Come on out. Come out of her. I'm asking you to forgive, Lord. Come out, spirit. Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Come on, just confess it. The Bible says you must confess your sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father God, I ask you to forgive me for being like Brother Mike and leaving these demons of anger, anger in my body, leaving these demons of lust in my body. I should have got them out years ago. Come out. Satan, come out. I should have got them out years ago. Now repent of them right now. The Holy Ghost starting to move. Come out, you're right there. There you go. Come out, that body right now. Quickly. Quickly, come out. Quickly, come out. Come out, body right now. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, come out. You fear demon. I command you, demon of anger. I bind your power. I bind your power by the authority of the word of God. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Demon of lust, I command you. I bind your power. Come out of me right now. You stinking pervert. You stinking pervert. Come out in Jesus' name. Every demon from my mother. Every demon from my mother. Every demon entered my womb and took my son. Every evil spirit that took my son in the womb. Come out of me right now. I command every spirit from my mother to come out of my body right this second. Come out right now. I command this coward spirit of timid shy and timid. I command you come out of my body right now. Yo, get out of my body. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Every demon from my mother. The demon of exhaustion from raising my son. Being worn out. Worn out with the conic chaos and confusion of my demon infected son. I want every spirit out of my body right now. Every transfer spirit from my family, my parents, worrying about my son's behavior having to watch him all the time, wearing me out. I repent of it right now in Jesus' name. Spirit, I command you to come out right now. Just take a breath and blow. Come out. Come, there we go. Come out right now. Come out. Come out, devil. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Keep coughing. Keep, there you go. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Keep coughing. There you are Coming out right now. Thank you, Jesus. Here they come. Here they come. Hold that. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come on out. Come out right now. Thank you, Jesus. Watch us. I curse you, failure. Come out of that body right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I curse you, fail. Come out of that body. Let go of the mother. Let go. There he is. Keep coughing. 
Come on out. Come on, you Delia spirit, you coward devil. Spirit, you're block, blocking my soul. I curse you. I command you to break off of me. Break. Satan, lose your hope. Satan, lose your hope. You. Get out of body right now. You control her. Come out of there. Get out of there right now. Get out of body quickly. Come out right now. You demon of fear, I curse you. Come out of body right now. Come out right now. Anxiety and fear. Fear of men. Fear of failure. Fear. Fear of divorce. Come out right now. Come out, you devil. Go. Come out of that body right now. Come out quickly. Come out of me. You get out of that body right now. Every demon from my mother and my father. Every demon from my sinful family tree. Come out right now. You spirit of anger. I hate your guts. I hate your guts. I'm using my authority. I command you come out. I command my sister to come out of my body right now. Just take a breath and blow. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Blow. Come out right now. Get out of there right now. What are you doing? There he comes. Come out. Here he comes. Come out. Come out. Right there he is right there. Come out. Yeah, buddy. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there, buddy. Hold that. Hold that. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Come out right now, quickly. Come out right now, quickly. Satan, loose, loose her anointing. Loose her gift of healing. Loose her gift of healing. Stop it. Stop blocking your gifts. Come out of that body right now, quickly. Get out of there right now. Go. Satan, go. Satan, go. Satan, go. You coward spirit, you come out of my body right now. You coward spirit, you come out of my body right now. Come out of my body right now. You spirit of rejection. Cowardice. Get out of my body. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. No, you're not done. Come out of there quickly. Come out of my body. Quickly. Loose your hold quickly. Loose your hold quickly. Loose your hold. Get up. There you go. Can I pray for you? Close your eyes. Okay, breathe out of your mouth. Oh, breathe out of your mouth. Ready? Come out of there, devil. Come on out. Breathe. Come out of her. Come out of her. Mother repented. You got to come out. Every demon from her dad. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out of me. Come out. Come out. Come out. I hate your guts. Did you hear me? I hate your guts, so you demon of lust. I command you to come out of me right this second. You get out of there. Come on right now. Hurry up. I said I hate you. Did you hear me? What are you, deaf? Come out of there right now. Thank you, God. Come out of that body quickly. Come out quicker. Autism, Deason. Come out of the mother. Demons of witchcraft from the family tree. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there, you sorcerer. You sorcerer. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come on now. Use your authority. Just get mad. That's how you do it. I renounce this wickedness and sin in my life. I renounce it right now in Jesus' name. I renounce this wickedness. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Come out. There he is. Come on out. Hurry up. There it is. Come out. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Get out of that body. Come out of that body. Come out of that body in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of there. Come out. You come out of there. Come out of that body right now. Satan. 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 Come out. Come out. Put your hands on your bodies. Spirit of fear and anger and lust. I bind your powers right now. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come on my body now. Go. Come on my body now. Go. Every demon from my mother. Every demon from my father. Every demon from my dad. Come out. 
Come out. Stop blocking my soul. I curse you. I command you to stop it. I said stop it. Stop blocking my husband's soul. I command you, Jesus, you come out of my husband right now. Get out of my husband right in a second. Get out of my husband right now. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. She repented and renounced. She's repenting right now. Oh, good girl. Let's go. Come on out. She was in the new age. Oh, new age. That's the worst thing you can be in. Come out of that body right now. Come out, you witch. Come out of there. Get that witch out of there. Come out. You witch, come out right now. Hurry up. Come out. You witch, come out of there right now. Hurry. Hurry. Come out. Voodoo. Witchcraft. Voodoo. Get out of my husband. I command you to go. I hate you for what you've done to him. You stole his love. You stole his affection. You stole everything from us. Come out. Come out, Satan. Is he out? Almost, almost. Oh, good. Get right out. Come out right now. There he comes. There he is. Go. 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 Go in Jesus' mighty name. Get out right now. Go. Come out. Evil. Evil. Get out of there. Every spirit wearing me out through my son. Constant responsibility, constant exhaustion, and no one will help me. I release these spirits now in Jesus' holy name. I release every spirit from my son. Come out. Come out. Get out of my body. Hurry up. Get out of here. Hurry up. Go now. Go now. Go now. Get out of there, buddy. Come out of her kidneys. Come out of her kidneys. Come out of her kidneys. Oh, in Jesus' holy name. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, come out. Get out of my body. I strip you from my body. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Get out of there right now, you demon of fear. Fear of him never being healed. Fear of his future. Come out right now. Fear of having him watching until I drop dead. Come out. Get out of my body. Keep coughing. There it comes. Here it comes. Thank you, Jesus. Here it comes. Come out. Get out of there. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. You come out of there right now. You go. Tell that demon to come right out of there. He's hiding right here. Spirit, come out. Come out. There you go. Good. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Every spirit of autism in my family tree going back four generations, incest, witchcraft, adultery, and rape. Come out. Come out. Go in Jesus' holy name. Get out of there. Come out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. You get out of my son right now. Get out of my son. I mean it. You get out of there quicker than that. Come out faster. Come out faster. Come out of her tummy right here. Come out of her tummy. Satan, lose your hold. Go now. Get out of there. Satan, lose your hold. Get out of here. Hey, uh, you speak in tongues? Yeah. All right. Let's hear it. All your voices. Okay, now that sounds pretty good, but it sounds kind of stale. Like you haven't been using it. I try to practice as much as I can. Really? Every day? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. Now, you can you can jumpstart your spirit, man, by by using what I call uh, war tongues. Uh, it's not in the Bible. I just made it up, but it works on about eighty percent of the people I teach it to. And what you do, you take your tongues and you. Uh, shock the devil like like electroshock or something right okay. I, I'll do it Remo Shava Shave Remo Shavara Yon Remo Shava Pokava Ready Ready Go Good, good, good. Louder. Oh, beautiful. Louder. Good, louder. Thank you, Jesus. Louder. Thank you, Jesus. Go. Good. 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 Perfect. Perfect. You feel that? You feel that? Now, when you were speaking in tongues, just put a little, slow it down and put a little hum to it. And then kind of sing it out like this. Remo Shava, Remo Shava, Libra. Good, good, good. Louder. Perfect. 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 Feel that? Yeah. That that's that, that's your problem. You're you're, you're spiritually uh, you need to uh, jump start it. Like Paul said to Timothy, uh, stir up the gift that's within you. Remember when he said that? Yeah. That's what you're not doing. Just stir it up. You know, like, boom. Yeah, because when I do plan, I think when I was practicing, I would kind of do it kind of low. I was kind of no, like, be, be. Right now, every month. I was just worried that I wasn't doing it right. I was just kind of like, fear. Yeah. Go ahead and repent of it. I repent of the fear of God. I repent of the spirit of God. I repent of fearing my spirit things. I fearing the gifts that you give me, Lord. I repent and ask for forgiveness for fearing any of the spiritual gifts that you bless me with. In the name of Jesus. He just forgave you. It's over. Okay, you repented, right? Yeah. Try it again. Ready? War tongues. Go. Hey, you got any bad feelings about anybody? In your past? Negative emotions about anybody? In your past? In my past, um, I forgave everybody. I forgave my mother. No, I didn't. I, I, I asked you if you had any negative emotions. Oh, negative emotions? Not forgiveness. I already know you're forgiven. Like, re like regret? Yeah, emotional. Yeah. From about somebody in your past. About somebody, just like, just sadness. For who? Like sa just yeah. sadness over who? Just all the people that did who? me wrong, that, that did all the Who's times. the number one? Um, this, um, Maria Lisa Mendoza. She Maria? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and pray for her. Okay. I, I, Is she dead? No. Okay, go ahead and pray for her. Um, I, I forgive Maria Lisa Mendoza. For no, her. no, pray for her. Oh, I pray for Maria Lisa Mendoza that she comes to full repentance and that she makes me fall down. Hate. More hate. He got hate bubbling up. No, you pray for her. What's her name? Maria Lisa. Maria, Lord, we ask you to bless Maria right now in the name of Jesus. Go hunt her down. 
Bless her life, heal her body, heal her mind in Jesus' name. She doesn't even owe me an apology. In Jesus' her. holy name. And I want all her spirits out of me now. There, see, there he is right there. That's him right there. Come on up. Maria, come up. Here she comes. Maria, come up. Maria, come up. Maria, come up. Satan, I command you to let me go. I'm in charge now, not you. Get out of there. I'm in charge. Come on. Come on. Maria, come out of that body right now. There they go. There they go. Are we getting him out of there? Yes, yes. Come on. Come on. Okay. No more disappointments. No more negativity. And no more anxiety. No more anxiety. There it is. Come out. There it goes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No more anxiety. How'd that go? How'd it go? How'd it go? Good. You, got, you got do that every day for five minutes? Yeah. Okay. I will do it every day for five you minutes. You got it. <laughs> That's the only thing you're missing. You're, good, you're already good to go. Come out of there. There it comes. Come out of that body. Come out of it right now. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there. Get out of there right now. Get out of the body right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. You rotten devil, I want you to stop blocking his healing ministry. These hands are supposed to be healing the sick. Oh, there he is. Come out of the body right now. Come out of there. Get out of there. Stop blocking his ministry. Come out right now. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, you speak in tongues? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Louder. Okay, stop. Now, your, your tongues are blocked. They're easy to fix, so. I just follow after me, okay? Boya Basha. Kemo Sati. Bekoba. Andolia. Do you notice that I was speaking in short syllables? Yes. You notice I was using different syllables? Did you notice how sometimes you repeat? You get out of his hands right now. He's supposed to be healing people. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> no, do you notice you were kind of repeating? Okay. Now let's try it again. Only this time you add some syllables on your own. So after what you to say. mine, yeah. You just kind of add yours. You're not learning to do it. You're just using your gift, not mine, yours. Good. Keep going. You stop looking around. Come out of that body. You stop looking around. You come out of there quickly. Get out of that body and stop blocking his ministry. Stop it. Different syllables. Louder, louder. What are you thinking about right now? You were just thinking something right now. You went like this with your hands. I was just thinking this is something not even related to this. It just popped in my head that then there's a lot of people with blocked tongues going on. Oh, okay, go ahead and repent of it. Huh? Go ahead and repent. The blocked tongues? Now thinking there's other people have blocked okay, tongues. This, this is between you and God. Right, I don't right, care I about repent, those other I people. Repent, I, I care about you. Yep, right, I See? That, God, Thank you, Jesus. The devil slipped a thought in my head. It was so stupid, I can't even believe it. And I repeated it to Brother Mike, and I'm taking command over that stronghold. You get out of there right now. Don't, don't you look around again. I'm, I'm coming out right now, you filthy devil. Stop distracting my mind and taking me away from my ministry. You stop it. Be strong. Speak it out. 
Hey, can you help your wife? She's got her tongues are weak, like introverted. Can you speak out loud? Let her hear you. Love you. What's left in there? What is it? Spirits, familiar spirits. From what? Um, maybe from ancestors and then also like really church demons. I had people. You had people put their hands on you? Oh, that's worse. Yeah, I know. That's why I thought. Ready? Oh, come out of there, Kundalini. Every demon from church. Every spirit from a seminar. There he is. Every demon from a crack pot at a seminar. There he is right there. Come on, buddy. Come on. Get out of that body right now. I want you out at any cost. Come out now. Church demons, Kundalini, seminars, seminars. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Get out of that body right now. Shake out of her. Shake out of there. Shake out. Shake out of there, you witch. Get out of that body. Hurry up. There it is. Get out of that body right now. Get out of body. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Yeah, cast these kundalini demons out of her, will you? She got him in a seminar. Get out of the body right now. Hurry up. Come out. Brother Mike, he needs deliverance. He said he needs more deliverance. Good. He, he does. He, he, was, he was getting it because he's praying for you. I'm trying to get him delivered by paying for you. Now, how'd that go? Did they cover it? Did they come out? It's all. There were some covenants that were made. It's all, it's, all it's, all it's all out here. <laughs> okay, but but Mike, get the last right get the last piece out. It's right here. There's just a little oh, piece no, left. Not here. for long. Not for long. Uh, okay. Come on, my body, right this second. Every ugly man that ever touched my body. All sex demons, come out of my lips. All sex, come out of my lips. Come out of my womb. Come out of my vagina, you stinking transfer. Come out of my stomach. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out of my body. Come out of my body. Every ugly man, all of them. Now go. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Stop stalling. Go, Satan. Hey, what's she talking about right now? Huh? Oh, she's talking about getting one on one with her. Oh, no, yeah. hey, no. Huh? You did it again. No. Oh. Listen, your okay, wife. I, we are talking in back about it. Listen, yeah. no, okay. Your wife gets sidetracked. They put a thought in her mind, she goes with it. See? You just do one thing at a time. You, one thing at a time that's what happens when somebody's intelligent she's intelligent she's very intelligent yeah and that's a problem spiritual because they tend to overthink spiritual things so you got to get them to slow down and just focus on one spiritual thing at a time because they have very strong minds so she can process several things at once and the demons know that, so they help her process several things at once, which blocks her. See that? Oh, I need to get a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, I, I need to do that. Oh, what about that? How come that? And she does that. Click, 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 click. Collation. See that? It's bad spiritually. Intelligent people are hard to heal. Dummies are easy. <laughs> okay? Right? You're, you're intelligent. You're a lot more intelligent than he is. He's intelligent, but you're like, he's here, you're here. Okay? And you're being hurt by it. Right? The, the gospel is not education and intelligence. It's love. It comes out of here. Guys. That's how you get the Holy Ghost. Right? Yeah. Now, now try your tongues again. Ready? Here we go.
Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, you ready? Yeah. Yeah, see her to think about that. I put that trash can up there to get her gum and she had like five thoughts pop in her head. <laughs> right in front of her eyes. You see that? <laughs> now, you, you, she, you have to take control of your mind to to be find your destiny. I mean, her heart is good. She's a loving person. Her mind is very strong. <laughs> we have to balance it. Because she's a lover and she cares. Got good heart. But this is blocking her anointing. Blooming, not blooming. Ready? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for over processing everything and analyzing things too much, particularly my husband. I'm going to stop over analyzing my husband and trying to fix him all the time and point out what he needs to do and what he doesn't need to do. I'm going to quit doing that. And I'm going to focus on myself and my anointing and my gift of tongues. And I'm just going to, by faith, step out now. Add a girl. That's better. There you go. Good girl. See that? It's 50% better than it was five minutes ago. She, she catches like that. Once you get her mind on something, she'll go with it. But she got all these other routes. Add a girl. Be strong. Louder. You got the puppy? What is she doing? What is she doing? What is she doing right now? Oh, she's telling me some things. God, well, stop doing that. Stand up. Dear Jesus, this is the end for me. I want this marriage demon out of here. It's a marriage demon tormenting me. I'm not going to be talking about this anymore. I'm going to be doing it. I want this. Yeah, a girl. Come out of here right now. I want my marriage torment. Oh. Oh, you go. Out you go. They come out of there. We're working on it. Did it come out? We're coming. He's in his stomach right now. Uh oh, no. He's got to come out of there right now. Get out of there right now. Come up. Come up. Come up. Come up in Jesus' name. Come up. Come out. Stronger. Come up. You talk. Right Add a girl. Oh, thank you, Jesus. They're coming out now. Keep coughing. Thank you, Lord. Keep coughing. Thank you, Jesus. You got the anointing. You got the Holy Ghost on you. Go for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coughing. Satan, lose your hold. Satan. It's a fight. You're in a war right now. Hey, is that thing out of there? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, You're sure? It, there's just a little tiny. No, there's not. Turn around here. Legs. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body. Get out of there. Right Satan, come out of her. There it comes. Come on, keep coughing. Come out right now. There you go. Keep coughing. Come out right now. They stop coughing and then they start praying or doing something. Stop it. Stop. Come out right now. Stopping it. Keep coughing. Come out, you devil. You get on my son. You get on my son. You get out of that body right now. Hurry up. You stop screwing around. Come on, everybody. You stop screwing around. Come out of here. Get out of the woman of God. Get out of the woman of God. Oh, man. What's she talking about? Uh, I was talking about how you told me about my tongues. Now I said, you have a tongue. You were asking them about that? No, I was telling her. You were telling her? Yeah. Okay. What happened? What happened when you were doing that? Sense anything? Or say? Happy. Okay, there it is. Now, slow your tongues down. He'll show you how to do it. 
and just put a hum to it and sing a love song to Jesus. Here's how you do. Oh, you see that look on her face? You see that? Yeah. What was it? See that? Yeah. She said, "I'm gonna look odd. That's odd. That's odd." Came right out of her face. They, you can read her like a book. <clears throat> you tell the Lord you love Him, and you do it the way He really likes it. You put a little hum to it. <laughs> Sing it out. Come on, sweetheart. Oh, you just grinned again. That's insecurity. Come on, buddy. Insecurity, come out. Sing it out. Just put a little hum to your tongues. See, it's real easy. You just release it. That's how you do it. Now, who beat the stuff in audio? Emotionally. Emotional. Yeah, who did it? Well, I guess recently it was um, what John was talking about, but CFM. What? Uh, the other church that we used to go to. What they do to you? Um, just the whole thing that happened with the uh, with the church. What would you do? Well, I left it, and so. Why'd you leave? Because um, just the pastor there was involved. What did he do to you? Well, I used to work with him. Yeah. His assistant, and uh, he did something to you. No, he uh, it was to my friend. Uh, he did something to your friend. Yeah. What did he do? He wasn't like involved with her sexually, even though she didn't. Want oh, he to. committed adultery, and he kind of forced her. Yeah. And did he actually sleep with her? Uh, no, not. He tried to. They would do like just disgusting things. He was oh he was he was fornicating with her, but they didn't physically fornicate. Yeah. They didn't physically do it. Now why'd that bother you? Um, just because I was uh, working in like the leadership of the church and um, nobody told me anything, and I didn't want to uh, leave all the all the brothers and sisters there. That really hurt me. Why'd you leave? Um, just because I felt uncomfortable and they had left him as pastor and I just didn't think that was right. Now listen, um, that was a mistake, okay? You had nothing to do with that sin and you didn't do anything wrong. Correct? Then you left. Because you felt bad. I just didn't think that it was so bad. Well, there's all kinds of things in churches that you and I don't think is right. Right? That wasn't the only thing. There's like 500 other things. But you never left over those. You just left over this. That, that church took a loss when you left. You got a loving heart. You're a kind person. They lost that over something he did. You had nothing to do with it. Then you hurt yourself. And you know what? You got sadness in your soul because you miss those people. You loved them, and then some of them loved you. And you walk out. Okay, go ahead and repent of it. You ready? Dear Jesus, I'm asking you to forgive me for abandoning my church. I'm so sorry. I should have stayed there and helped them. None of that was my sin. And I'm asking you to forgive me for what I did. In Jesus' name. Please help me. I pray for that pastor and ask you to forgive him and anoint him. Have mercy on his soul.
And this coward spirit that caused me to run from my church, I bind his power. I bind him in Jesus' name and I command him to leave me now. Sadness, grief, guilt, sorrow come out of me right now. All right, take a breath and blow. I'll keep blowing.